We're recording now. Hopefully we'll have a recording of this class. Um, if you haven't done it already, you might want to wet your paints now so that they're ready in 40 minutes or so. It's okay to sketch and to doodle and to what, every, everything's okay. Um, so I'm going to start by sharing my screen and um, jumping right in here because I know, I, you know, I, I allowed for three hours. If we need more, we could do more next week. And I know that's really a long time, but as I said, you, we will get up. I'm going to get up and move downstairs to my studio at one point. So um, here we go. Okay. This is a this is a reference that I had up in Piedmont, and I I produced three paintings from it recently. And some of you who are in our open studio Zoom have seen all this. But um, this is one. I'll see if I can drag this up here. This is one reference. This is the other. And um, by the way, I'm gonna throw lots of stuff at you. You can take notes if you want, you can re-listen to this. And the things that I throw at you later on when we pick up a paintbrush, we'll be, we'll be addressing all this again. But I just wanna let you know what I'm thinking as I'm painting. Um, as you look at these two, and, and there is a third, I'm not sure. I'm not sure where it is, you will come upon it later. But if you look at these two references, you'll see that um, in the original, it had a really high, um, I'm blanking on this, um, what's this line called? Horizon. Horizon, thank you. Um, and really not very much of this background tree, which I, I really enjoy. This is to me the fun is putting in this background stuff. Um, and I, I kind of copied that here. I always do it a little bit of a hill and I guess there was maybe the area that I'm hiking in is full of hills. So when I do these paintings, my paintings always say hilly because that's what I'm trying to say. Even if in the photo, it doesn't capture it. In this one, I dropped the horizon line, which gave me room for uh, sky and the trees. I could have just had the trees go all the way up and that is an option. Um, and then I've got the creeks. I'm fascinated by winter creeks because they look much like this photo. They look to me like it's oil. They're black. This, this one, I, I would say it's a bluish black relative to the brown shade up here. But you're an artist and you can push things any way that you want to. You know, you can push it towards the blue or push it towards the, the warmer colors if you want. But as you look at this, I did choose cooler. Oh, by the way, these are the same um, palette, same paintings. I just used more blue in this and I used more of the brown in this. And I think I had four colors here. I gave them to you ahead of time. Uh, sepia, uh, blue, the cerulean blue, the yellow ochre, and I may have done burnt sienna or burnt umber. That actually looks more like burnt umber. It's not red enough to be burnt sienna. I love the grayness of winter. <laughs> I, I just, I walk out in a totally gray scene and I just, I'm amazed that there's no color. And, and as I said, with the stream, this very same stream in the summertime will be blue. I assume it reflects the sky, but why isn't it reflecting the sky on this day? I don't know, or in the winter, but all of that fascinates me. So um, I'm gonna just quickly take you through a lot of examples. And again, if you have questions, go ahead and ask. This is, this is, um, let's see if I can, oh, I think I just threw that thing out of that folder, didn't I? <laughs> I think I did. <laughs> you hear the boom? I think, no, that's not it. I think I just threw it out and I could hunt for it. Well, I'm not going to hunt for it now. <laughs> but um, I think I did when I went boom. This kind of, oh, I bet I threw it into this folder or one of the folders. At any rate, what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna to sketch. 
And I ask you not to pre-sketch because if you want to paint like me, you have to do the process that I do. And I, I'm going to give you lots of information on that process, but sketching it is a part of that process. Um, one thing I wanted you to notice is that this background is very soft. I find that just, uh, I just love it. I love that soft, but I, <laughs> I love watercolor and I like the texture too. And you're gonna see later, I, I actually had a sun in here. I used that yellow ochre and then I decided it was too bright. And besides I was kind of doing a shady day. Uh, and that's today, the painting I'm gonna to do today will not have a sun. Um, it's gonna be a, fog, or, you know, not a, a gray day, not a foggy day, but I put in this yellow and then I started to lift it out. And then I started getting these water marks. And um, I like it when watercolor paints for me. <laughs> And I, I oftentimes find those mistakes to be the best part of my paintings. It, it, it just goes that way. And I, I tend to allow things because I can tweak them later, but to go in with more water would have just made more marks. But I, I did decide, well, I kind of like the texture. It matches the, the texture of the, of the bark. But that's a quick preview of what we're going to do. Um, First, I'm going to take you through, um, let me look at my little notes here. <laughs> We're going to look at some finished paintings. Painting example. There we go. I figured out, by the way, here's a little technical tip. If I can do it. I figured out that you can, this, these are just icons in my folder. And I figured out that you can make the icons uh, different sizes and normally they look about like this and I have to open all the images and my computer's kind of slow and I found out I could just make the uh, icons all big and I'm not I'm not I will open some but I'm not going to open a lot so I talked about if you're a beginner I almost don't like that word but um if you're a beginner, you're going to have other options. And these, these are these first four, which actually these three are pretty much the same, are um, some beginner options. And that will be you'll sketch the trees with me and you can just lay in the background and not worry about the river and the rocks and the twigs and the hillside and the, and the sun and all. You don't have to worry about all that. Um, this is called a, a vignette because it doesn't, although the, the birches did, it doesn't fill the whole page. I think technically a vignette touches on three sides and mine touches on four sides, but um, it's, it's just abstract. I mean, I've just kind of suggested that these dis, dis, uh, distant trees and it's not realistic, um, but I like it a lot. It appeals to me. And this was a demo I did in a class where I was doing that. Um, so it, it for, again, if you're a beginner, and also if you're not a beginner and you're thinking, I can't paint during a workshop, especially one where the teacher doesn't leave for an hour and let you paint, I can't keep up with her. You too could just follow this method. Um, and again, I'll, t I'll show you how to draw this. And so do you don't need to start yet. But it is a way that you could do something and have a kind of a finished painting rather quickly. I know a lot of instructors say, don't try to get a frameable finished painting in the class, try to learn. And it's really hard to put your brush to the paper and not think I'm gonna, uh, this is gonna be a winner. <laughs> I think we all think that every time we touch the paper. But um, if you want to just, do exercises and then later do a finished painting you're welcome to do that um one thing i wasn't really looking at my notes i did want to say is you're oh i'm totally fine with you doing as many screenshots as you'd like so if you're thinking i want to do that you know do a screenshot and then you'll have it in front of you later i don't know if you'd be able to print it off but you you'd have you'd have it on your screen you could reference it this Yep. Anita is asking if you put the white edge on your painting digitally. Is no, I no, I think I think my computer did that. 
these are just icons and I think the icons have the white edge, but it looks nice. Oh. Mm -hmm. Looks very nice, but I didn't do it. Um, this painting is, um, and I, I think Betty has probably seen it. This painting I painted for the counter in my kitchen and it's almost four feet tall and a couple feet wide. But it's another example of, of what you could do if you wanted to do something simple because that background is really pretty simple. It's complicated because there are a lot of little birches in there. It's easier if you just have like three or even two, like this example. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna move on a little bit. This is not really super easy unless you have experience painting, but those of you who do pretty much know what you would need to do to do something like this. You're gonna draw the birches and then you know sketch a distant, it's just a more complicated scene. Um, and we're not, I'm not gonna do it, but you could be doing that if you chose to. Let me see, I do have paintings off to the side. This is also, I just came on this last night. I love this guy. I think his name is Lewis Camera or, Camera or something. He's, in, he's obviously not from this country. I think he's from Spain or somewhere. But, you know, he's, he's a professional artist and he did this and I think it's beautiful. I wish I could paint like that. So if you're a beginner or you're not, and you think, I, I just got to do something doable here. I hope you're inspired by his painting. I have some others of his as well. There's the, okay, so this is a third. I did all three of these off the same reference. I'm gonna set it there. You can see the trees are kind of the same. The thing about the reference is it was the, you know, the camera, the aperture on the camera, when you shoot it towards a snowy, snow and sky, it's going to open up and, and it darken the trees. And these are all birch trees, but they, I guess they kind of look like backlit birch trees, but I didn't really care. I just, I just was playing with values here and we're gonna talk more about values, but I just decided to kind of paint it the way it looked. And if it looked like oak trees, I'm okay with that. I just was enjoying the color and the values. And on this one, I went, you know, as you can see, mostly brown and then put little dots of blue here and there. And again, if you're a beginner or if you're not and you're thinking, I can't keep up with this, you could just lay in a little stream like this. There's, I'll, I'll bring it up. Sometimes I don't like waiting for my computer because it's so slow. But um, you could put, put a little stream like this. There's not much to it. It's just a little color here and there, kind of wind it through. And we're going to talk about how to decide where your stream's going to go. The stream could have gone back up this way. It could have gone any way I want. It could have come forward. Um, so that's another way, to, you know, you, and I, this Lewis, what was, I'm not sure is Lewis, yeah. He's got another one that I'm going to show you where the stream is just barely suggested. This is an old little tiny, probably five by seven little ink thing that I did. The water's never blue like this, <laughs> um, but I was just having fun with it. I don't know. Oh yeah, okay, that for some reason. This is a very old one that I did, the Temperance River. It's got the, the rock in there. This, this one is for some reason not showing up. I'm sure if I click on it, it does, but I, I have my hints to myself and it had a, yeah, I think it had a deer in it or something like that. And that, you know, those are another option for another day, if, unless you're really good with critters. Um, another option is to take the same technique, and we won't be doing this today, but it's the same technique I use on a ski trail. And uh, you can see I did represent the sun here and I have shadows. All three of these, I've got shadows going um, but I'm not, it, the shadows are another element and I don't want to deal with too many elements today. That's, that's another thing, but like you could copy this color scheme and do, you know, the sun the, um, this was inspired by a quiller. If you know, uh, I can't think of his first name, but he's kind of famous for bright colors. And I, I told you, I spent a lot of time before I begin a painting and I looked at a quiller painting and I thought, you know, I'm going to do one of my birch things, only I'm going to kind of pick up on quiller's colors. And so that's what this one was all about. And it's unfinished, by the way. 
but um, this is a very old one. You can see the, the snow. Sandy, and everything. Sandy says it's Stephen Quiller. Stephen Quiller, thank you, Sandy. This is a different method, just to not, there's a critter for you. You can put little critters in your paintings, um, whether they're birds or whatever. Um, this is just a little story about me. My husband does this, this painting here. My husband does um, or did do medical missions in Central America. And he talked me into going down one year. And I taught art for the week to about 15 kids from three or four different countries. All of their parents were serving permanently. This was Cabuco, Guatemala. And these three kids were in the same family. They're Canadian. And their dad uh, managed the hospital compound. And when I taught, the kids had to convert languages for me because like I had French speaking kids and I had, I had the Dutch kids and the Dutch kids couldn't, they didn't do English, but they could do French, but I had kids who could do it. So while I talked, I had the kids <laughs> converting languages for me in my class. And it was, you know, beastly hot there. So we would go out in the morning and work. This is a wall around the compound. You can see the barbed wire here. So, um, and the, uh, when I arrived, the director of the, the hospital, as soon as I got off the bus, he grabbed me and he said, I want to show you what I want you to do. And this is what he wanted me to do in addition to teaching the kids. So they designed this just the way you're going to design your work. I don't have any bark on here, very little, or they don't have any. I, I, I sat with them indoors on paper and they drew this thing up because again, design and thinking about things is, is how I do, it's how I process my art. And so I had them do that. And I told them probably a lot of the things I'll be telling you, although that was years ago, I didn't have any gray hair back then. Um, and, and then they painted every bit of it and we were only given three cans of paint, house paint. I had this blue, I had white and red. And uh, that was all I was given. So this guy said, okay, I want you to paint a mirror on this wall and here's your colors, blue, red. And I had a small can of white. The, the wall was white. So I only needed the white to, to mix the sky color and these, this little texture. But again, I let the kids do their thing. You can see somebody, just kind of did these little pattern marks on there. And I think it's quite sweet. And there's a little de deer with a little tracks and somebody did a bunny and there's a, I don't, that's not the end of the wall. It's like a 20 foot wall. So we worked on the wall in the morning and then all day long we painted indoors and learned about painting. And then in the evening when it cooled off, we came back out and worked on the wall. This one is just super light, a very, very little color. The palette is probably two colors. Um, I see this blue, probably cobalt or burnt, burnt sienna, I think probably. It's an old painting. And um, maybe indigo, maybe that was it. I don't, I don't really see brown in there. Um, so again, today you can do two colors. You don't have to make it complicated. Here's this picture. It wasn't quite finished. I digitally was trying to figure out the branches on here. You can see I so I took a photo of it, put it on my computer, and then sketched in some branches. And, and it, it sold to a friend. And so I had to do another one because I wanted it for this wall space back here above this. It's a very high counter. It's not, it's like a bar height. It's not a, it's not a low counter. So the bot, the bot, my head's on this wall, my head's probably about here, maybe. <laughs> Because uh, this this is, I mean, like my waist is below this. So I decided that I did it here. And we're going to talk about this. The lines on the birch, these horizontal lines, determine where your eye is. It's like a horizon line. And basically, um, those who know something about perspective know, and I don't, so correct me if you wish. Uh, that the horizon is where your eyes are. So there's the horizon line. And so on the horizon, I'm going to show you this again and again and again. So don't worry if you don't get it the first time. 
On the horizon, these lines are relatively straight. Below the horizon, they'll curve. Above the horizon, they're going to curve concave, convex. Convex on top, concave on the bottom, straight where your eyes are. So after I did that painting, I decided to do another one. And by the way, these are boards. I won't get into the detail because that's another story. Sarah knows about that one. But they're both done on boards, not on uh, this was done on paper and then I glued the paper to a board. Um, but I decided I would paint another one for myself because I wanted some tall birches here. And I, my eyes come about here when I'm looking at this painting. So I decided everything above my eye was going to be convex. So that when you look at these trees, you look like you got your your head cranked up and you're looking up in the in the sky because you are if you're standing in my kitchen and you look up here you are looking up and so I decided I'd paint the painting for that place and um and I and I'm hoping that you'll look at some of those things okay just warmer cooler uh, pretty much what we've talked about yeah texture there's all my notes in the uh, that's probably it. Here's my friend again. So again, if you, well, I mean, this guy's professional and I would love to paint like him. If you are a beginner, look at this. All he did is he drew two trees and then the rest are kind of suggested, but pretty loose. And there's, there's, I mean, I don't know if this is a hillside or what, but these two look very similar. I have a feeling, I don't know, he was just playing around. Check out that stream. No rocks, no twigs, no shadows, just, just laid in some wet, wet brown and blue. Didn't worry too much about what it looked like. And actually, I think he just did the background and then took it and dragged it across the front. <coughs> so um, yeah, just some options. And then I just wanted you to see that um, I'm not a colorist. I really admire people who are. This is Dave Gilsvik. I love his work. And um, I don't know this person, but I stuck that person online. Uh, this one, they're actually two different people. Um, so if you're a colorful person, don't be limited by what I'm telling you, you know, for the palette or for anything. Just know that um, you can be yourself and use your own palette and do your own thing. I did want to point out that this artist, and I don't know her name, but she's in, um, uh, I always forget that. It's near Bayfield. What's the next town over from Bayfield? Ashland. She, look how clean she puts her birch. Nothing ragged, but I don't know if I have. Yeah, but then she'll put the, she'll put the, uh, the peeling happening. But I think she's just one of those people whose houses are probably just meticulously clean. <laughs> <laughs> because I think sometimes how we paint kind of is reflected in in uh, who we are. Notice these lines, convex, straight, right? Concave, concave. Do you see how she changes? The higher she goes, the rounder it becomes. And that that's perspective. That gives you the feeling you're looking up. And she wanted your eyes to be right here on this one. This is pretty straight, your eyes are here. You can start to see this wrap around the back of the tree. So she's, she's doing a little, little perspective there. Uh, but I, I kind of like these two guys like juxt juxtaposed because um, you are who you are and whatever style come, you come out, don't feel like, oh, you know, mine doesn't look like yours. Again, I lean towards this guy. I really like what he does. But there isn't a right or wrong. This is art. We're not, you know, we're not really reproducing a, um, a photograph. So uh, just feel comfortable being who you are and not feeling like, oh, I have to do exactly what Karen says because she's telling me I have to do it. You really don't have to. You can be yourself. And sometimes when you're in a class, it helps to follow the instructor and then, um, and then when you're on your own to kind of put your own personality into it. 
Now we're waiting for my very slow computer to open this file. And this is, yeah, this is the last file and then we're gonna take a little break. Um, so these, those, I asked you to do homework if you could. And it wasn't about finding the image you were going to paint. It was about getting to know Birch. Because again, you know, people say, oh, I just love your Birch. I think what makes my birch unique is I spend a lot of time with birch trees. I, I walk several days a week with birch trees and I've planted myself hundreds of them. I mean, I just love trees. So I, I want to show um, just several ideas just so that when you're doing your work, you feel it's okay to do it this way. Um, so here's the jagged, jagged stuff. And here you see very smooth. This is actually the same tree here. And uh, Sarah, I told you this is river birch, but I was looking at today and I thought, no, river birch does not go paper white like this. It'll never do that. It does look kind of this color, but it always gets jagged like this, but brown when it gets old. So there are many kinds of birch. That's the other thing is if you do like really smooth or jagged or whatever, there's not a right or wrong, even in nature. There's different kinds of things. And even within a tree, you'll see there, you know, variances. Um, also, let's see, I was gonna just look at the hues. Look at these, a burnt sienna probably, lots of burnt sienna there and brown. So when you're thinking about your color palette, you know, obviously blue, blue, blue sky, some brown here. I, I almost feel like I'm seeing reds here a little bit of red, violet. Um, so when you're thinking about your palette, you're free to do whatever you want or to play around. If something turns out kind of weird, fine, you know, make another one. Um, I was wondering if you could um, put your pictures full screen. I can, my computer's very slow. Oh, I suppose if you're mm -hmm. looking at a small, small screen. Can you put the whole page bigger? Uh, my this is my page. Uh, I can do this, but I don't think the icons get any bigger when I oh. do that because they are. Okay. Icons. I can. Um, my computer's really slow, and it's really going to slow us down. Okay, never mind. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what What I'll do is I do have some coming up that I want to point something out to you, and I will do it there. On this one, I, I just want you to see that this is transparent here. Same tree, it's got the bark is thicker and it's got that white on the back of it. So it's not transparent. Same tree, transparent bark, not transparent bark. This is actually a painting done by a Chinese guy that I have stocked in the past. That must be his name there. Um, pretty beautiful. Someday I'd like to, I haven't really done a lot of like, fussing over the transparency, but I'd like to do that. You see a little burnt sienna here and then the blues. So he's got the red hues and the blue hues. Um, here again, same thing. Notice the lines, how they curve. Now this one I'm gonna blow up for you cause I'm gonna show you several things on it. But you see how long, like we're waiting now for this to blow up. And we would spend a lot of time waiting for everything. But if there's a particular painting that you want me to blow up, I'll let, let Sarah know and I will do that. So there's several things I wanted to point out on here. One is I see violet here. So, you know, just you're an artist, use whatever moves you, but I do see violets in here. Maybe I'm crazy. Um, same tree, two different trunks. Notice that the shadow here, the line of the shadow is, is, is a straight line. And on the same tree, the shadow, it starts here and it actually comes down here, doesn't it? It's like, that's a shadow of either a piece of bark or a branch that curves down. Then it comes back here and it kind of wiggles and it comes here and over here it does a big loop and back down here it does again because of this bump. So the reason why I'm telling you this is when you look at other people's birch trees or birch, you know, in nature, you can do your shadow straight and pretty hard 
or you can, I mean, this is much softer and it's not a straight line. And when you, uh, if, I, if you were to look at my finished paintings or anybody's, when you see that the shadow line is jagged, it, it implies that the surface of the birch is not smooth like this tree is. It's older and it's acquired some character just like many of us. Um, there are, especially on older trees, but even this one isn't terribly old. This is probably about a seven year old tree. You can see where the branches were and they've broken off over time. And you, and you see this little circle here, but then you see stuff, little scars around it. This one comes all the way over here. So when you're putting on your shapes, partly you should think about what, what is realistic on a birch, but then you can do what you want. Design-wise, if you need a certain shape, you can do that. Like this one comes all the way over here. This one is is um, localized more closer to where the where the tree was but so you're free to put things wherever you want but occasionally you might want to suggest a reality here's a broken one that comes out there are times when you'll see a stub on a on a tree and i i often put them in my trees what i do is like let's say i have a little skier down here i might put a stub and it's going either i'm going to put a little stub that's going to just point down to the skier or point up to the skier, or I might have a, a whole branch that kind of leans down and you'll see that. Um, notice too that this birch here, big, big lump on the side. Again, some are very straight, some are not, not so straight. Yeah, if anyone has questions, holler, holler. Um, I, I don't know why, but I love these patches, these dark patches and kind of love playing with them different ways, make them soft, make them solid, dropping color in, sometimes suggesting distant trees. In our painting, if you're gonna do, you know, the more challenging one, you're gonna have the foreground trees, then you're gonna have the middle ground trees, and then you're gonna have these background trees that are just in this case, it's just a patch. In this case, it's got a little texture in it. Another thing I wanna point out to you that when you're near a tree, a lot of this you think, well, I knew that, but I, you know, as an artist, think about this. When you're near a tree, you'll see, notice you see the trunk and you don't see any branches or you might see a couple of little branches. And then when you go step back further, you see more of the tree and more branches. So look at how many branches are here. And we're only really only a few feet away. Maybe it's 20 feet back. But here you can see the whole tree with lots of branches. I usually don't put this many. I usually just put an occasional one. Um, but then when you're half a mile away, all you see is brown. You, you just see a patch of brown. Here, these are foreground, right? And you can choose how many you want in the foreground. You could just choose two, or you could add some of these, like this one, if you want. And then um, these background trees have, have, you can see some branching going on in there. And that picture that I showed you at the very beginning where I showed you that I um, tried to clean out sun, a sunshine that was too much. And then it started making kind of weird patterns. This is what I'm thinking of when it did that. And to me, they were kind of organic patterns and it worked for me. I'm, I'm, I, I, as I said, I like to see watercolor kind of do its thing. And at first you panic and then you go, okay, this is probably be the best part of my painting where I was not controlling. Another thing I want you to see is this is a hill and these trees are way beyond. They are like half a mile away. In this case, we might have a line, but you'll see, well, I've already shown my paintings, but you'll see my paintings again. In this case, I like to bring the background and have a jagged edge. And that jagged edge kind of says that the trees aren't all that far away. Like, 
this tree here is not that far away and I can kind of see the stumps a little bit. There is a tree line back here that's way back there and this might be the bottom of it. So there, there actually is a hill like this but it's obstructed by these closer trees, so you can't really see it. And why am I telling you all that? Because you're going to make those choices when you do your painting. And if you don't today, you know, hopefully you'll be painting birches in the future. And those are all things that you can think about. Um, I'm going to show you kind of a unique way to draw the birches and that's why I asked you not to pre-draw and I want you to notice on this birch and some are more than others or even on this one you see how crooked everything is it comes here it's because it grows so far and then it breaks off and then it starts growing new and it goes off an angle but look at how crooked and a lot of times I, I wouldn't put anything that crooked because I, quite frankly, I think the viewers would be upset. Like that tree is so crooked, but they do look like that. And these, and again, every artist expresses what they want, but a lot of times I see people drawing a birch tree with a straight line. I started this line down here by the middle, on the right side of the middle birch and it's going straight up and it ends up on the right side of this other birch at the top. That's because, watch my cursor. I mean, these, these birches are, are going back and forth. They're waving and they're crooked. And I'm gonna show you a little trick on how to easily do that because my mind likes to have everything tidy and I have a really hard time drawing crooked things. I, I, it just automatically, tries to straighten everything. Just a difference in color here. I think we're at the end here. I happen to, um, oh yeah, I did want to point out here. Notice how these two trees overlap. Um, I also, I see people doing birch trees and they'll have like eight trees and not one of them overlaps. All eight trees are laying out and I, it, it kind of disturbs me because it's not natural. I mean, trees, they're crooked. Look at how this one leans over. They're crooked and they cross each other. Not every tree does, but some do. And again, you have to decide what's going to work for what I'm trying to do. And if you wanted to do something really simple, you could just like have just these two trees or these three trees. Um, and it, you know, again, if you're sketching, just sketch that out. I mean, it's pretty simple, simple idea there. I, I was just out photographing this weekend and I noticed this branch. I did want to tell you that a lot of times too, what I see that's kind of wrong, I think, with people's birch trees or all trees is they'll have all their branches perfectly horizontal, just all of them going off the side. And I happened to catch this one, I really didn't intend to, but watch how it zigzags. It goes to the left, to the right, to the left and curves to the right. Then it actually goes back out here and continues on. Um, but this, the, the significant thing about this branch is it's going away from me. It's not going horizontally away from the tree. It's going back and away from my eyes. And um, I think I thought I was going to show here. Here's one that's coming right at me. It's kind of a messy tree with way too many branches. I need to, that's in my yard and I should clean it up a little bit. But um, a branch can, can sometimes come towards you. And you know, this one of course is going away. This one's going back, almost straight back. And I, I had one somewhere where it was totally horizontal and I was gonna point that out to you. Also on this painting, the birch have almost no color and I, I, they look that way, you know? And I think if you chose to do a birch, I think there's a little blue maybe in this shadow, but if you chose to do a black and white birch, I get it. Sometimes that's how it feels when you're out, out in nature. So um, again, you, you're free to, to do your own thing. Whoops. Ah, there we go. Okay. Um, let's see. I wanted to show. Oh, here's one that's 
perfectly horizontal. You really don't see that many that do that. And, and it, it kind of bothers me just like a tangent when they're that horizontal. This one's going away and I followed it with this red line, it goes back. It goes straight away from us, from the viewer. Um, and the reason why I show you all these things is you might, for design reasons, you might need a branch. And these are options. You don't have to just go horizontally away from the trunk. You could go back or you could go forward and it'll, it'll make things a little more interesting. Another thing I, I wanted to point out, I'll try to open this one. We'll see how long it takes. Sometimes my computer just goes on strike when it comes to opening. If you squint at this picture, what is, and I'm asking you, so give me an answer. You can unmute yourself for a second. What's the darkest thing you see in this picture? Darkest value. Well, either the top of the tree or that branch on the right. Okay, that's detail, you're right. Other than detail, shapes, what's the darkest shape you see? And I should have said that to begin with. Shadow. The, the shadow. The undersides of the... The shadow, yep. Yeah. Uh, that's the darkest? I, no. I mean, these detail, these little detail are, are dark. They are the dark, black is black, and that's true. Yeah. And when we do our trees, the detail will be the black is black, probably, unless you take an artist's license and I'm sure you'll do a good job if you choose to do that. But the reason why I point, point this out is we're going to talk very briefly about our value study, which I like to do. I don't always do it, but I like to do it. Um, and I think our gut reaction is to make something else the darkest thing, not this shadow. But if you did a painting and the darkest thing in your painting was the shadow, that's pretty dramatic. You're gonna, that's gonna be a very powerful uh, painting that you're, you would have. And so it's just something to think about again, you don't have to do it today, but uh, you don't have to be timid either with a shadow, which means you'd have to put a lot of paint on. And if you wanna get this white, that white and that is the whitest thing on this painting you're gonna to have to go pretty dark on this and in this case i think that's almost black you have to really put a lot of paint on your brush to get the shadow to be the darkest thing in that you're going to look at i think that's it i think those are just other paintings now these again are birch but this is what happens when it's when it's backlit like this they look, they look like something other than birds. So um, this is just a little, I just want to play around with this osmos. This is just a, a little, another little, much the same idea as we talked about. Notice how these are very blue in color and I go, you, you know, neutral over to warm. There's no right, there's no wrong. Um, I put this little fake sun there and look at the shadows. On this one, the shadow's way over to the side. This one, the, the shadows, just to make it look rounded, the shadow's in the center, um, and the light's coming off both sides. And then you see the shadow move over uh, because the sun's coming from another angle. So just thought I'd talk a little bit about sun because that's going to be important before we start sketching. We'll talk a little bit about perspective. Um, do you notice the trees on my left, which I think is your left? Um, do you notice it looks, it feels like you're standing down on the ground looking up? Mm -hmm. that, that's mm -hmm. because the trees get narrower. As I got to the top of the page, I made it narrower than down here. And here I kept the width of the birch tree trunk pretty much the same. And um, also remember those lines that I told you about? They play a big part in the perspective as well. And we talked about that. If this one, you know, if this one you're looking up at, then they're all going to be convex. And the other one, we have convex on the top and concave on the bottom. And I kind of threw in a um, 
horizon line. Um, yeah, my next little card I'll do when we're painting. All right, let's start drawing. Uh, so I was going to do a horizontal, I just switched to vertical, and that's how it goes. Now, the first one, one thing I do on every painting that I do is I eyeball the center of the page and I put a little dot and I know when I frame, I'm gonna frame that little dot back off so I don't really have to worry about it. I do that so that I don't put things right in the middle of the page. It's a reminder for me of where the middle of the page is and when I'm drawing in a tree or a stream or whatever, I can look at those little dots and think, no, I'm right in the middle. I need to move it up or down and it gives me an idea. I don't measure unless I have a huge, uh, if I had like a, maybe a half sheet or more, then I'll measure because I could be a couple inches off eyeballing it. And I might be off here, but I'm only a, t a little bit off. And I figure if it looks right, it's good enough. <laughs> so um, the first thing we decide to do is the horizon. And that's why I showed you and pointed out the different ways of doing it. And in this case, I've already decided I'm putting my horizon high. No, I could flip that. I guess I'll put it low. <laughs> I can change. Um, lower than what? Lower than the center. That's, that's what low is. Anything lower. I, don't, I try not to get too close to it. But I'm going to do it high or low. And I, as I said, I always do a hill because I like hills. <laughs> So I'm going to do a hill. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start down kind of low here, and then I'm going to ride up. And there's my, there's my, so yeah, you can put your horizon wherever you like to have it. I'm already thinking, I should tell you this, I'm already thinking I might like to have this stream disappear back here, but that will come later. Don't have to worry too much because I'm going to do some darks in Okay, next thing I'll draw are trees. And for simplicity, I'll put three. I talked to you about if you want to just draw two and focus on doing the bark and that's just the technique, you can do that two or three. Um, so I'm gonna put three. And Chinky Chi talked about the um, mama bear, the papa bear and the baby bear concept. And that's just, you know, a larger, whatever you're doing, whether it's rocks or whatever you're doing, a larger one, mid-size, small. So I can put daddy anywhere I want, except for here, right? Right in the middle. And I have my little dot there to tell me where not to put it. So I can put daddy anywhere. I usually bring the big one forward. I don't have to, but I usually do. And, um, I usually lean it in to the painting because I don't, I don't want the main item in my picture to go off the page. I want it to lean into the page. That's just a design thing. So let's say I started here. I can change that. I go up to the top and decide where it's going to end because I don't want it to be random. I want, to, I want it to turn out the way it's meant to be. So now I'm figuring out I'll show you. I'm figuring out just how much, maybe I can pull this down. There you go. I, I'm figuring out, I'm looking at the slant and how much, I don't want it to slant in like too much, like it's really obvious. So I have a dot there. Here's the trick. This is how I get the, uh, the tree to not be a straight line. I'm gonna draw and stop a bunch of random jagged lines, but I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna end here. So I'm just gonna go, I'm looking at that dot there and I'm just gonna go whoop, any, any distance. And I can kind of go in, I can zigzag out a little bit, right? Because that's what birch, that's why it took so much time to show you what birch trees look like so that you could buy into this, this program here. Um, this is the widest tree and I can decide, is it gonna be huge or not so huge. So now I'm deciding the width. And if you, uh, if I'm going too fast, let me know. <coughs> I can't, 
see, I suppose I could, I can do perspective. Or Sarah, you could let me know. Does everybody have that one line drawn? Mm -hmm. Okay, now I, yes. decide, I draw another little dot and very important, I go up to the top and decide how wide it's gonna be on the top. Now, if I wanna be a little mouse looking up, I'm gonna make an arrow, right? If I'm just me, <laughs> And I'm not looking real high, I'm just looking a ways up. And I, I want this to be somewhat big. Um, but it's always gonna be somewhat narrower at the top than the bottom because of perspective, because you're looking, you know, this is a pretty, pretty long distance. It might be six feet or 12 feet or 15 feet, but there's going to be perspective. Now I'm gonna do the same thing, only that I don't start and stop it at the exact same spots. I just randomly do it. This one's harder because I gotta, I need to, uh, oh, I can't let the birch get too wide in the middle. Birch, trees don't, no trees get wide in the middle. They, they always get narrower, narrower. So this is a little tricky. If you wanna watch me do it, you can watch me. Okay, I'm just gonna. All right, kind of jagged. I missed this dot up here. I made it narrower than I wanted. And uh, maybe it's good that you saw that it didn't turn out the way I planned. I planned it to end here. I'm not crazy about this curve, but it is what it is for now. Sarah, could you let me know when everyone's got that line in? Um. I'm not seeing their drawings though, Karen. They'd have to. Right. Um, just put your hand up if you're looking at. I'm ready. Okay. All right. Or if anyone needs more time, just holler. Okay. Now I did the dad. Now I'm going to do mom. I could do baby. Mom can go anywhere. Mom can be next to dad touching. She could be over on this side. I often put the bigger one on the other. Uh, mom on the other side, but I don't have to. I could, I could put it anywhere I want it. One really important thing is negative space. Negative space is the space that is not what I'm drawing. So I'm drawing birch, so this is a negative space here. This mm -hmm. is the positive, this is the negative. One thing I don't want to do is put all my trees spaced like that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I need to change the spacing and, and so I'm looking at these spaces making sure they're different and you could lay your brushes down and figure out that if you want instead of looking at a blank page um, I think I'm going to do the mother <laughs> and I'm going to have her cross lean out a little bit so she has to be Mama bear has to be smaller than, than the dad. Sorry, I know I'm probably offending some people. <laughs> because uh, it isn't always that way in our homes, I know. But so now I, I've decided I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have the mother cross over about this point. I don't usually do that, but I feel like doing it. So I, now I'm going to do the jagged line thing, and the goal is to end about here. And this one's easy because I don't have to worry about the width, right? So there's mom. And uh, I'm going to do the other side, same concept, uh, but it's going to end, it's got to be narrower. And I'm going to have it end about here. And uh, go for it. Ah, oh, she got way too skinny. I don't like her that thin up there. The reason why I don't like it is it's um it implies that we're looking way up in the air and I don't want to, yeah. I got I'll have a little pencil mark there, but that's the way it is. So as we said, this is a little bit tricky, a little bit. See, I want this to be narrower than here. I got really skinny here. I'm gonna fix it a little bit. Might just have to have some 
dark bark stuff going on here. We'll see. It. I know I can put a shadow there, right? Okay, now I have the third and we could have more than three, but then I'm gonna bring it forward just because I don't want this going on. And I don't want it, I don't want it equal to this one. So I'm just gonna bring it somewhere forward. And this one, I'm gonna lean into the painting. Whoa, I was gonna put a, a river here. Remember that idea? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the river just moved, because if I put this, if I put the hmm, yeah, I can put I can put the little tree off here. Or I can move the river. I can move rivers. I will move the river. Um, I'm going to start it kind of forward. Erin, would you uh, give us a tip yep. on how to be sure your river doesn't look like it's running uphill? Yeah, we'll get to that. It's it okay. just has to have horizontal lines running through it. That's all. Oh, okay. That's all there is to it. Um, so I'm going to do the little one now. I, I just, I have this mark here I'm going to go to. Little trees tend to be more jagged than the big ones. So this is smaller. I'm just looking at this width and going smaller. So there's the third. Now I need to end up. I'm, I'm trying to keep it a very similar width because I, I didn't really want the big perspective going on here. So now, now I'm, I, my eyes are going to be off. Uh, following this because I don't want to get too wide here. This is the tricky part. Doesn't matter how many times I stop. There we go. And I think that's the hardest part of the painting. <laughs> All right. Um, you know, I got these lines I have to cover up, right? I could, you know, I mean, I could just really work on erasing them. For some reason, they're not lifting out very well. So I think what I'll do is put a lot of shadow there. <laughs> I think, I think because I got these lines here, I'm going to put, I'm going to put the sun source coming here, even though it's not going to be a bright day. But that's what, and I often, if I have a really complicated picture, I will often actually draw a little sun in here, but this pencil is hard to erase. So I'm not sure I want to do that, but I often will draw a little sun where the sun is. So it, it keeps reminding me, okay, that's where the sun is. Now I can change this hill too. Um, I can, I, or I could add another hill. That's the other thing I can do is I, I could add another hill going up there and have this one coming down, whatever. Okay, um, now if, let me look at my notes, which I hardly looked at. Um, rise line, hill, foreground, light source shadows. <coughs> okay, now if you want your painting to have three depths, the background trees, the foreground, and the mid, then you need to draw in those, um, those middle trees. I think before I do that, yeah, before I do that, I'm going to put those distant trees in there. And if you want sky, then they're, they're not going to go all the way to the top, but they could go all the way to the top. But um, I'm going to have a little bit of sky. And again, I don't want these two spaces to be divided in half. So I could have my background trees little, which would imply they're, remember the picture where I said they're a half mile away? If I want to imply that this is a big hill, like the ones I hike around, and the distant trees are way out there, then they would just be this, this tall. But if they're not too far away, uh, then they're going to be much larger because anything that's further away is smaller. So I'm going to put in, um, I'm going to put some trees here. I mean, sky, the top of this tree. And I don't always pay attention to it. Make the line a little bit interesting. I'm going to have it go up because I have a little hill going up anyhow. Actually, wouldn't mind if it goes up like that. So there's, there's my sky, there's my tree. You don't have to put the sky in. It's easier without if you choose not to. And um, then there's the stream. Hmm. 
stream was going to end right here. I could end the stream here. I don't know. I, I think it's something to do with going left to right. I tend to I tend to have it coming out here, going in there. Maybe I'll have it coming out here. I'll flip that around. So um, this tree cannot be in the stream. It can be near the stream. So that means that that stream has to come somewhere here. The lines are jagged. I'm going to have it come up and um, disappear this way. I'm going to have it go this way. It could go, it could even go behind this tree if I want it to. I could do that. It doesn't have to. Okay. And I have it jag. It's going to start here and it's going to end up going back over this hill. But when I draw a stream, I have to think of the, the, the banks are not straight like an arrow. Um, so I have to kind of think about how they're going to angle back and forth. And the further back I get on that stream, the less, the smaller these little zigzaggy things are, these little juts, which are the rocks and the snow banks. I don't know if you can see that very well. I can't. I'll, I'll draw it darker. Hey, I'm teaching. I can do that. Yes, you can. I would never draw this dark because it's going to show a lot. Um, I don't want these two things moving together, but that's that tendency for me to do everything the same. I don't want to do that. Okay. So you just zigzag a little bit. Mine is a little overly zigzagged. Um, don't, don't worry too much about it, but there'll be the, the rocks and the banks and so forth. Then I have my stream going to this side of the tree. That's harder. If you're looking for an, cause you're going to, I'll just trust me. It's harder. If you want to keep, keep this easy, don't have it cross the tree. Just, just keep it in the middle between the trees. Um, I'm going to have this, the stream kind of disappear here. It's it over that snowbank and then it's going to get a little bit wider here kind of and then maybe disappear up here so there we have it um if we want to add mid-distance trees now we can decide I, I think putting the stream in was a good idea because you don't have trees growing in the middle of the stream so by putting the stream in first, that allowed me to figure out, if I put those mid-distance trees in, then I'm really limited where that stream's gonna go, unless it goes behind them like this one did. So now I'm just gonna put a few mid-distance trees there. They're not going to the top of the um, painting. They could, but mine are, Maybe they will. <laughs> I do change my mind. I am. I do. That's why I said don't don't choose a scene that you necessarily want. But um, no, I think I'm going to run them off the page. So I, when things are on the edge, a lot of times I will tip them in towards the painting. So here goes mid distance. I'll do it much darker than I would normally do. Okay. So this is my mid distance. Mid distance. They're much thinner than the ones that are forward, right? So uh, they, they shouldn't come in front of these trees, the bottom, because they're back a ways. So I'm gonna just draw another one. They're very thin. They can all be the same way. Uh, you don't have to worry so much about them being jaggedy because they're so far back. So um, I'll put this one on the edge of the stream. Here's the center of my paper. I don't want it there. And I'm going to actually lean it back because I don't like everything leaning in. Okay. Now I just kind of look at the width and keep it skinny. I don't have to worry too much. Um, so there's three. I think I should have a fourth. I'll put a fourth back here coming off the, off the creek. Okay, there we go, up the edge. 
I'm going to bring it to this side of the creep. There we go. Okay. Um, and if you were doing the, the really easy route, you didn't put any hills in, you didn't put the sky, you didn't put the stream, you just put your birch. And that's okay. That's a good thing. The next, do, do, do people in general want me to pause while they're sketching? Any? Just to take a look at the, the gallery view. Um, or you can tell me. You can just unmute yourself if you want me to wait a little bit here. Just tell me, not yet. <laughs> I think I'm good. I don't know well, where I see some up. thumbs up here. Okay, thumbs up. Okay, thumbs now, up. talked about concave convex eye line, your eye line. Right, is this the um, horizon here? Right. It's not where the trees are, it's where the ground is. Okay. So horizon, you want your line straight-ish on the horizon. And I forget, so if you look at some of my finished paintings, you'll see I got the lines wrong because in the heat of the moment, I forgot where they're at. So I always kind of mark the horizon with some straight lines going across my most important trees because those are the ones I really don't want to muck up. Then at the bottom, now these lines are just reminders. They're just a reminder, just like the little four dots that I put on my page. Then on the bottom, I'm going to do some concave. And on the top, anywhere, I'm going to do convex. Another reason to do this, on all my trees, I mark this way. Hey, look, I have a little. If you see something growing on your tree, go ahead and feed it. I saw I had a little stump here, a little thing growing there. So I extended it and I see here, I see a little branch. Of course, I didn't think about it when I was drawing my little lines, but I see it now, a little dead branch there. So the three main trees, put your concave, your convex, and around the high rise, it doesn't have to be right at it. Do your um, straight, straightish lines. Now, if you would like to decorate your trees, um, you don't have to worry a lot about it. About And the decoration is the bark and the, all those little dark marks that I took 40 minutes to show you. That's why, because if you're going to paint them, you have to know them. And those of you who went out and got a reference, uh, you that that's going to help you because you can just copy off your reference, right? <laughs> So you look at your trees in your reference and you, you see little marks, like uh, maybe you see a, there was a branch here and you remember I told you it's, or maybe I didn't tell you that where a branch was, it's, it's, um, it's convex on the top and concave on the bottom. So it looks kind of like if you look right at it here, we'll, we'll put one where we're gonna look right at it, right here, we'll look right here. It's like this, it's like a canoe if you're looking up. These marks, can, I don't know if you can see that, not that well, right? Do you see it's kind of like an eyeball? You got the upper lid, the lower lid, and then the eyeball. That's what it looks like where a branch is broken off. You don't want too many of those right in the center of your picture. Um, so I look at where these little bumps are and I start putting things there. I start putting marks there just to give me help when I'm painting. And then, and then I remember that concave convex, like, okay, I'm near the horizon, kind of keep it sort of straight. It doesn't have to be perfect. The only people who will judge you are people who are in this class today. <laughs> um, and, uh, people who know about this, you know, a lot of people don't know, but by fussing over these things, oh, by the way, the bottoms of the birches are usually very dark. They have a lot of dark. You could just put some dark to remind yourself that you're gonna, I just kind of scratch it in there, that you're gonna really put a lot of dark down here. Then um, 
if you're doing a snow scene and if, you know, you might have just drawn the birch and have no bottom, but if you're doing the snow scene, you do want um, some snow banks uh, coming up. Ideally, they should be different shapes, right? Mine are all the same, I'm gonna draw this. So you want your snow banks coming up on your tree. They can do it on the little tree too. Really the way to do it is to bring the bottom down like I did here. Well, I think you can see that, yeah. Bring the bottom down. Actually on a hill, on a hill they will be slanted like this. So if you want this to look like a hill, we could actually bring this tree down and it's gonna imply that there's a hill here next to the creek. Um, so I don't worry too much about these mid trees. You can put a little dark mark here and there. We don't want a lot of detail on those mid trees because they're, they're too far back. Then there's the branches. Um, I never know where, I, I think my focal point's right here. I never know where, you're supposed to know when you're supposed to determine. So if my focal point is here, I'm gonna take a branch somewhere on this tree and uh, I don't wanna cross over the stream too much. I'll bring it maybe here. I do like the idea of crossing over this tree because it creates distance. I'm gonna take a branch here and I'm gonna not start it right on the side. You can some, but I'm gonna start this branch here. And it's, so it's going to have, well, let's see, we're convex. This little branch is going to go. No, I, if you're busy drawing, I do recommend you watch this branch creation. It's a lot like the trunk creation. I want to point to this area with this branch, but I'm not just going to put a straight stick, right? I'm going to do it. I, and that's why I took all that time to show you the branches. This branch is going to come out and stop and then it's going to go like this and then again um, and it's thicker it's thicker coming off the tree and the further down it gets the thinner it gets and it can have you know you can have things coming off it does that but it's pointing in this area so I put on a few main branches I'm not, I think I'm going to put one off here I see a little bump here anyhow let my picture speak to me Remember, wider, this is my biggest tree, super wide, and um, thinner as it goes up. That kind of broke up this space a little bit. So I put got that on. Um, so if you did your homework, and you can, of course, pull it up online, and if you looked at Popular Mechanics, there we have it. Sarah warned me about those notifications. <laughs> <laughs> now, now they know. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a branch coming off here. I, I, I need to think about it. I'm not going to do a horizontal. It's either going to go up or it's going to go down. I think it's going to kind of go up. Um, we have it curve up. And then I'm going to start again, kind of a zigzag like that wider at the base, every tree, every branch, the further you get away, the thinner it gets and it might have some little stick things coming off of it. Um, and you want the most, let's call these decorations, all these little marks, you want the most on the most prominent tree. Um, and if this is my focal point, maybe, maybe I want more here too. And we can add more later. And one thing I had to point out to you when we were looking at slides is sometimes you just see a little dot like that. We sometimes do dots. And it, you know, it's just a decorative, it's something to put on your tree. So, um, yeah. If you see a jagged line, maybe that's a little stump coming off it or, oh, and then there's the bark, right? You don't have to worry much about the bark because it's going to happen quite naturally. But if you have, if you want some bark, if there's a special area in your picture, like this is pretty empty on this side of this tree, maybe I'll put a little bark here. You could sketch in a reminder. I'm gonna put a couple pieces there. But the bark is 
going to come naturally when we do our um, negative painting. If, as I said, if you want bark for um, design reasons, you know, like I showed you those ones where they're just beautiful and transparent, then put them on. The higher up the tree, the smaller they are. That will create perspective. Um, this is my big tree, so I'm going to put a, a big piece of bark. Just and and they do curl. Chrissy do everything. They curl and they peep. They do all kinds. And a lot of times there'll be another one near it. And they sometimes will come off the trunk, not not off the edge. Because if they're coming off the edge, it just means they're on the other side. I'm not sure what this line is. I think that's maybe where my first tree got too thick. I'm gonna take all right. Well, yeah. <laughs> how much, how many? And then these horizontal lines, the ones that are concave, convex, and they're gonna be a part. And sometimes, you know, how much, how many, it's up to you. It's whatever you want. You know, you don't want to overdo it. Sometimes they'll be together. Sometimes they go halfway around the tree. Sometimes they go um, partway like this, and then they stop, and then they pick back up down here where I'm going to, I get this stub. Um, but again, I talk about not spacing things evenly. I'm a master at that. <laughs> notice this distance it's like it's not quite the same but I have a habit of the distance between a branch and the next dark whatever they'll all be perfectly even because that's what I do I even everything out but that's not what nature does so you don't really want that so if you have a big blank spot maybe you need a branch but don't make it exactly the same direction, the same shape as, as another one. Sometimes branches will come down from above into a painting or off from the side as well. I see this big space here. I kind of want to fill it with something maybe. I got this branch here. I think I might just have a branch coming off the page like this. Oh, okay, I have a tangent here where it's stopping. This branch comes here, this one comes here. I have to cross it. <sighs> okay, I'm sure we could spend a lot of time. And honestly, in real life, I usually do spend a lot of time. I enjoy this part. I take it up and while I'm watching TV or doing whatever, I'll, I'll take it up and I really, I put more time into this than what I'm showing you today, but we're just we're just getting ideas of how things work. Um, Sarah talked about how do you get the stream to look horizontal. I have these things that jag in and out. They don't have to be, but if they tend to be horizontal, that's the beginning of making things look horizontal. Another thing on the stream, and you don't have to do this. Remember, some of my examples had nothing in the stream. It was just water. But if you want, you could put some pieces of ice. And, and those of you who have drawn and painted a long time, you know those are important design elements, aren't they? Um, and the ones in the foreground need to be big. I'm gonna frame this thing up to here. That was not the best placement. The frame's gonna come right up to that rock. Um, I'll put another one here for that reason. They should ideally be different shapes. Then as you go back, if you're going to get gutsy and put some rocks in here, snow covered rocks, by the way, if you're going to do that, they're smaller as they go back and that gives you that perspective again. Everything gets smaller as it goes back. Okay, I just threw some rocks in, but there's going to be more rocks might just pop up when we do the painting. Okay, does anybody need a little break? Because the next thing we're gonna do is some painting, but we can break, we, you know, we're gonna lay in that background first, which will be negative painting around the birch. 
And that's why I do, I do have some examples here. Um, I thought I did, yep. Yeah. That's why I showed you these half finished things because what we're going to do now is we're just gonna lay in these darks. And when we lay them in, and this is the reason why I said the one thing you need is a square brush. You could just about tell which brush I used on this painting. So let me walk you through it or talk you through it first. I'm gonna use a little smaller square brush. We're gonna wet the areas, just wet it, the whole area in between the important trees. Um, you, you, you can, but you don't have to do it to your mid distance trees, but you are gonna leave your front tree white. And we're gonna first wet it all because we're gonna go really fast and it's gonna dry. So wet it all first, that's gonna help us. I usually will wet the back of a painting before I start painting. I'm not going to do it today because it keeps it wet longer than that. And if I do that and I want this to dry so I can move on to the next step because you're all sitting there watching, it'll be harder for me to dry. So if I were not in this class, I would wet the back and I'd lay this part in and then I'd leave and come back next week. <laughs> so it would dry. But what I want to show you on this is you can just see my brush and I don't think it's that great that you can see my brush. You certainly don't want to see the brush all the way up the side because then once again, you've got the same, 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 same width all the way. You don't want to do that. Here you can, you can see my little brush marks, can't you? You see my little brush right where I did this? But I wasn't thinking that much about my brush marks. I was thinking about what I was leaving. So this is negative painting again. And remember you could like, I could decide I need to darken this like here. I could bring paint later and darken it. So with the, with the bark, I can't really get bark back, not sparkly white bark, but I can cover it up. So if I wanna make them air, I wanna air in leaving too much. I can always cover it up later. So I just want you to see where we're going because it's gonna happen fast. Ah, uh, yeah, this is another thing. So uh, the next thing you wanna do is your colors are wet. I'm gonna move my palette here. So your colors are wet, so you wanna mix up when you're doing your painting, you're not gonna go from your palette onto your page. You wanna have little puddles that you're drawing from. Um, they should not be super wet puddles. They should be maybe the thickness of cream, heavy cream. So I've already, and I'm gonna start with my lightest color because if I start with my darkest, I have to clean my brush off because it will be really dark. And then when I go in yellow, it's not, I'm gonna get the yellow dirty. I almost always paint a piece of paper towel on my hand, by the way. The other thing I use is, I've had this for 20 years. I take a, I take a sponge and I'll use it to dry my brush. I just have it sitting nearby, but paper towel will do. And I mostly use paper towel. Okay, I'm gonna mix up my little mixtures of cream. I'm gonna start with the yellow, yellow ochre, and I'm gonna pull out a nice thick puddle out here. And it, it's quite thick. You can see, when I drag my brush through it, you can see you don't even see the palette. And I did start with fresh color, but I had also had some old color there too. And I do have my tubes right here. If I run out, I can, I can pick them up. Now I'm kind of scratching up some old color and I see it's lumpy. The old color didn't totally melt down. So I'm probably gonna get some big lumps on my painting probably. I feel like I need more yellow ochre. When I'm painting, I choose out the paintings that I'm, the colors that I'm using on a given painting, and I keep them with nearby because I have a lot of colors and I want to have these ready. So I already feel like, yeah, I don't know, maybe I'll run out, so I'll just get this extra. I mean, because 
I've already determined, now I'm going to clean my brush. Because I already determined that my dark trees are the darkest dark, I need a lot of paint to get that dark because it always dries lighter. Okay, now, oh, I was also going to show you this plant. I got these scraps. I was going to show you that I, I often, um, I pretty much always play with the colors I intend to use. That doesn't mean I can't change. I can add more or do whatever I want, but it does mean that I have some idea of what I'm going to get for a finished product. And so I, I played with these, uh, here I have indigo, sepia, cerulean, and uh, I think that's, that's burnt umber. I had burnt umber there. These are, again, I've used this palette for about the last four paintings and I'm gonna pretty much use it. But I like to play on a little paper like that. I should show you, I have, I should show you, show you what I have. It's, um, it's the, you don't know what I'm getting, you don't know what I'm getting. Are you hearing the book? I don't know what it is. Well, I don't know where they're at, but I, I often have piles full of this stuff that I do before I start a painting. Just playing with it because whatever I'm getting when I'm playing with it like that, that's what I'm going to get on my painting. And so, I mean, you could just take paintings and or colors and then paint your painting, but why not get an idea of what you're going to get up front? Oh, I did pre-decide I'm going to put this red in there um a little bit i'm going to put a touch of this it is um it doesn't matter what red you could yeah, I don't, oh it is uh quinacrine burnt on orange and i'm not going to need very much of it but i did decide i want to put a little quin quin orange just a touch of red in there and then i have my um my sepia there's my sepia uh that's kind of my brown so I'm going to mix it up. I obviously have to clean my brush before I do anything else. I feel like there might not be enough sepia. So I'm going to squeeze a little more in. So when, when I do this part, it's going to go really, really fast. Um, but all this prep, all this prep goes into it. Okay, I have to clean my brush now. I'm gonna to have to get new water, of course, before I start my, my painting because already, already it's getting really dirty. Okay, so I got my sepia ready. I got my yellow ochre. Um, here goes the, uh, and you see it's very wet. I'm gonna mix it over here because I, I don't want it to get too yet. So here's the, the blue cerulean I chose. And I did decide I might put a little bit of this um, blue, cobalt blue in there. So I have that out. So I got the red, the yellow. Okay. I have to step into the other room and clean my water because it's really dirty now. I'll be right back. No, I won't be back. And what I will do, I will do what they do. Was baking a <laughs> I will just grab the bucket of water that I set out beforehand. <laughs> but I will have to step away and get some clean water. Okay, so you see my palette. That stuff's thick. You see how runny it is? It's not. Because I can always add water, but I can't take it away. And if I want that background dark, I have to have a lot of paint. Um, I think all of us as beginners squeeze out just a little bit because we're afraid to use and waste paint. Oh, let's see. Oh yeah, I'm, I, I had this little note. Um, you see I point to a palette knife. I do have a palette knife. That's what the, um, the credit card was for. You can cut, cut the credit card I have bunches of credit cards that I saved. They're not really credit cards. You can take the scissors and cut the credit card like this. 
to be just exactly the point that you need it to be. If, if, and I found that a plastic knife, a cooking knife, or a lot of brushes on the bottom of the brush, they're kind of knife shaped or they're sharp. And you could use that. Yeah, I've seen people use their fingers too. But anyhow, that I will do some scraping. There's a little scraping maybe there. And then there, here's the branch coming at me. I didn't put it, I didn't put that one on my trees. I maybe should. I'm gonna stop and put one coming at me just because I like that. I'll put this one, I'll put it maybe here. This would be great. I'm gonna put a little, I'll put this guy. I'm gonna have him just come down. He's gotta get thinner, thinner. And then I'm gonna have it arch over a little bit. It's going to go over the tree the stream. I can't stop at this stream. That would be a tangent. Okay, so I put this tree is coming right at me. This branch is going to be wider at the base. Little thing. Um, okay, it's going to go fast. I promise. So I chose to put a sky in my painting. If you chose not to put a sky in your painting, then all you're going to do is the negative painting around the trees. I recommend now that you get some tea and sit back and watch this, uh, unless you're experienced. I'm sure some of you have done this kind of thing many times. And I get my tea. So um, because I had these pencil lines, I decided I might have a little sun source here. <laughs> That's how my paintings paint themselves, by their mistakes. Um, so the first, I would normally wet the back. The next thing I'm gonna do is wet the area around the trees, but very important, don't go up to the trees. Stay away from the trees that you wanna keep white. Because if you put your water right up along the edge, you don't have any bark peeling. Wherever you put that water, that's where your paint is going to go. After I get done doing this, I'll, I'll take a break and give you time to do it. I'm not going to move on. So unless you've done this before, I recommend you just watch. So I'm, I'm wetting lots of water. I could try to go around these mid-distance trees, but that's too pussy. So notice I'm not going near that tree. I'm not going up to it. And then down here, this is our horizon line. I like to stay away from that too a little bit. And the other thing, sometimes when I'm painting, I'll, I'll forget where the tree is. And I'll actually paint, I'll put the water or the paint on the tree because you have all these parallel lines. And it can, and that's another reason why I like to add the some of the bark and that stuff. Now, if I leave little white spots, I kind of like it. Um, I just like, I like, I like the randomness. This is tricky because I'm going between these two trees, but I'm not gonna go up to the edge because I can do that later. So the horizon line, remember I threw in that hill. I have, a, I have an extra hill now on my horizon line. So I'm gonna wet. Um, I'm gonna go over this branch. It's too putsy not to, I could. I could go around that branch and leave it white, 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 but I can lift it back up. So I know I have a piece of bark there, so I'm avoiding that. Okay, now I'm kind of looking at it at an angle. I see I've missed some white spots, that's fine with me. Get the corners and the edges of the page. I don't, I don't want bright white on the edge of the page because it will pull your eyes there. All right, I'm just looking to make sure it's really wet. All right, so uh, I'm going to lay in the sky and uh, I'm thinking about it. I just <laughs> decided I'm going to have a yellowish sky, and I decided that two seconds ago. <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm putting a little pink into my yellowish sky, and here goes. I'm just going to put it in. Now here's where I'm thinking, if you can see it. I'm avoiding, I'm thinking negative. I don't mind going right up to this tree because it's the end of the page, but I'm thinking, well, that's a really brown sky. That's not very yellow, is it? It's more brown than I wanted, but so be it. 
Um, that's why we pre-test colors. Oh, it's getting lighter. I, I put a little more yellow on. Now I'm putting the bark on this tree. Do you see that? And I'm gonna come down into the hill. It's wet, so it comes into the hill anyhow. But um, now is when I'm thinking, where is, I'm coming up to mama now. <laughs> and I want to lay in that bark. It's not gonna show that much with the sky because my sky is really light. Um, these trees cross. There's a little yellow here. And then the, let's see, it comes all the way down. Watch how I'm avoiding. Now I'm drawing the bark. I'm, and I'm just, whoop, didn't really mean to do that, but, but I'll just smooth it out. I didn't mean to go on to the tree. Whoa, I'm trying to wash it off, the blot it off. Um, I'm going across the sky now, I'm gonna come. Now I'm looking at how, I, I can go around that. I'm looking at bark, I'm thinking of bark, right? Going negative. Now I could go off this page here. So there's my sky, right? Now you see the bark, it's, it's like, it's there. <laughs> Already got it there. Okay, now I'm gonna lay in much darker the, um, the the distant trees and uh, I'll try to I can create a green <laughs> how do you like that green I want to pull some of this red into that green and um, and I will be dipping into the dark as well I think I'm going to pre-mix some yellow with I'm, I'm grabbing some yellow and pre-mixing a little yellow with that it because it's a little bit too dark Okay, now it's all pretty wet. If you look at your picture now sideways and you can't see the shininess, then it's time to pre-wet. And there's an area where I see it drying out already. I, I'm not too worried that this brush happens to be dirty because I'm putting dark in here anyhow. So if you, it's really important if you're gonna have this flow, especially I've told you about how some of them are just super soft. That's because it was really wet. And if it's too dry, it, you're not gonna get this part. Okay, here I go, this is where it's scary. Now I'm gonna lay in, um, lay in my trees. I think I'll, I, it's important to go all the way across and do it rather quickly. Okay, I could just have, remember now, this is where I have to, I have to think a little bit because I'm, this is my bark. Right? So I got to decide. I don't want bark everywhere. I want it. So it's a good thing that I have that puddle all pre made. So I can just keep going now. This is, this is mom. I'm going to come all the way over to mom here. And I'm, gonna, I'm laying in some blue that I wasn't real fond of that green. <laughs> Now I'm gonna come over to her. Now this will just find um, where that bark is going to be, right? And there's a horizon line. Um, I told you if that horizon line is crisp, you're looking over a hill at distance. If it's not crisp, if it comes down like that, then you got, you're right on the edge of the tree, of the woods. And I just made the decision that I'm on the edge of the woods. Okay, so now I'm gonna, again, negative thinking, I'm thinking about that. Look at that, I put that little piece of bark there. I can go around that branch, but I don't have to. I have to go over it though. Okay. Lots of color, it's gonna dry lighter. And this is supposedly my darkest dark. I, don't, I think it's going to be a dark mid valley. Whoa, I lost my hill. Do you see that? I just painted over my hill. <laughs> lost the hill. Hill is gone. And that's oh. the way. I'm just putting in some other colors here. Sorry, oh, dear. I missed a chat. I was watching so closely. Doreen uh -huh. asked, do you use? Tear and mend on the trees? Mere tear mender, um, misket. 
I I almost never do. If I were teaching children, I, I actually I don't even then. What I would do if I were teaching children. Now, if that edge was not wet, I would not get a soft edge up here. That's why it was one reason why it was so important. Um, no, I like to create my bark this way. Woods are usually darker at the bottom. So I have this dark stuff mixed up and I'm gonna lay it at the bottom more um, because that's where they tend to be darker. Now I could just leave it at this and I could let it run a bit. Sometimes I do. When I have the really soft, this, this is how I do it. I just put it in and um, see I have a little drip happening here, I'll pick that up. I just put it in and I let it run and don't monkey with it. Now, you notice that it's really soft here, but not here. It's because it's too dry here. So I just put a clean, wet brush and I'm, I'm trying to tease it out a bit so it matches on both sides of the tree. It's pretty soft here, so I'm okay. Here it's not soft. I'm gonna just go across it with a wet brush a bit. Because I want the tops of the trees to be all nice and soft. It kind of lost it here. Ideally, the sky, sky should run right into it, right? Run right into the trees, but it didn't, didn't work that way. So I could stop here um, and just let it be. I could let it float around a little bit. I like to soften some of these edges, especially on the edge of the paper, because I don't want your eyes to go to the edge of the paper when this is all done. Um, but also, whoops, just got some tea here. Do you paint with your tea and your coffee sometimes? Yeah. Okay, so I dip my brush in my coffee cup. Yeah. All right. So too I, often. I a lot of times go into water and dry my brush. I wish you could see my brush because um, that's what I do. Especially, I'm doing it again, washing. I especially like the idea that this background edge would be soft next to the birch tree because that will pop that birch tree forward because it'll be soft and blurry here, which will push. Well, I really don't like this long white line here. So I've got to do something while it's wet. I don't like this long white line. It's too, it's too much. We are seeing that. Can you move your painting over oh. a little bit? There I we go. Have I had oh, yeah. a strong white line. This was all white, so I put a little more oh. paint. Okay. Now I'm a little bit with the, with the birch. Um, and I don't like it here either, I because you're not going to have a whopping big square piece of birch. I could let everything dry and then try to just lay in some color later. Or I could put it in now and create a balloon, which is usually what happens. <laughs> but. Um, yeah, so like even here, I have I have this long white area here. So, and I don't, I don't want that. So I'm gonna, I stayed away too far from the tree. So I'm just gonna bring it into the, the line that I drew, you know, when I drew that line. I have little white specks like that. They, they don't bother me, I like white specks. Now, there's other things I could do. I could, I could draw trees, you know, I could go like this and suggest trees. I, if I were to do that, I'd take a, a blue and a brown. So, you know, I'm gonna lean one in here. I could do this while it's soft, just draw in some trees. Um, and that's how I do it. I just, you know, whatever. Um, the other thing I could do, I have those mid, Maybe I should put more thought to it so it actually looks better when it's done. Um, I have those mid-value trees, the, the ones are mid-distance uh, trees. I just threw my paper towel out, trying to get more. So the mid-distance ones, I, I wet my brush, I dry, I soak the, I pull the, paint out, it has it, no, no paint, almost no water. Then I go on and I'm gonna lift this out. There's lots of ways of lifting, whether the paint is wet. Now I'm gonna, I wanna take the paint off my brush. 
and then go back at it. And it works fine if I pull that trunk down into the snow. And now because it's wet, it'll kind of drip back in, but that's okay, I'll just come back at it. So here's another tree that I had drawn. I'll take that out. Here's another mid distance. I'll take that out. They look kind of straight. Here's one. And again, I'm going to give you lots of time after this. So, because I know it takes a little thought. But some of you may decide you're not going to put the, this these trees in. You might just say, no, I'm just going to do a nice saw. I can lift this branch over here a little bit. There was a branch there that you could try to lift that one out of the sky. Okay, I keep, what you're not seeing is I keep washing and drying my brush because if my brush right now has either water or paint on it, it's gonna, it's gonna paint that brush, it did. It painted that brush, a branch, it painted that branch like green and I'm trying to lift out. So I really have to go in with a clean, clean brush and you know, if you have a spot on your floor, I see, by the way, I see a um, bloom happening here. I don't know if you can see that yet, maybe not. But I see a bloom here and one here. Uh, the water, maybe because my, probably because I didn't wet the back of my paper, <coughs> it's kind of puddling. <coughs> and, um, and so be it. So we'll put a branch there, right? It's pretty though. It's a pretty bloom. Yeah, yeah, I just kind of go with it. So I can keep, if I want to get this wider, I can keep trying to lift out. Um, lift out a branch. I almost always, I love to put fallen trees in the background. So I'm going to put one here. Uh, I'm going to go here. It's going to go behind that tree. That might even come. And then that'll soften. Yeah. That um, Doreen says it's a sunrise bloom. It really does appear mm -hmm. to be. Oh, yeah, it kind of does. That's right. That's right. Well, because that bark is also scraggly, you can get away. You can get away with those things too. I think, I think I'm done. And as I said, you don't have to. You don't have to lift out if you don't want to. You didn't have to put in the, these darker you know, that texture in there. Um, I really like it when it has no texture at all. I'm gonna put in another tree. Another thing I could do is create like distant birch. This is a lot busier than I'm, I really care to do it, but I'm gonna do it for you just to show you what can be done. You know, you can just, I'm not just putting in trees like that. And this, it'll just have that more, more of a forest look like it's really dense. Uh, I'm thinking about the direction too. I don't, sometimes I get done with my paintings and everything leans the same way. I don't want that. I, and, and I remember I, sh I intentionally showed you that one that crossed because they do that. And there's one that I just crisscrossed in the background there. And I could um, maybe crisscross one back here. I'm gonna crisscross something back there. It doesn't do much, but. Yeah, that's basically it. No, not everything turned out the way I wanted. <laughs> but that's pretty. That's the mm -hmm. definition of it. So now um, there's one more thing that I can show you now. And I should show you my little palette knife. It's um, and you can do it with a credit card. Maybe I should do it with a credit card to show you. A friend of mine gave me this uh, about 25 years ago. She bought it in a garage sale. She's an oil painter. And she showed up at my house and said, hey, I know you're just starting to paint. She knew I did watercolor. She said, I got you some stuff. And this is one thing she got me and I just love it because I use it all the time. But she didn't know how and why. Um, you know, you could, I'm gonna, do the, I'm gonna do the credit card because those of you who don't have a palette like are at a disadvantage. But some of your brushes I know I have some, oh, some of your brushes are shaped like this. And you can do, this is why they're shaped like this, so that you can scrape out. Um, but if you don't have that and you got the credit card that I told you to get, I, and if, you're, if you see me in person, I save these things in the mail. 
<laughs> just so I can give them to my friends or use them myself. Okay, so I have this little credit card. There's two things I can do here. I could scratch out trees, but I'm going to do something else. I'm going to put uh, a tree in here. And first I'm going to put a little water around it because I want it to smear. And then I'm going to dig right into my paint, straight into the paint, not into my puddle. I got straight paint on here. Let's see if you can see it. You see it's right out of the tube. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put this tree in this way. And I, I, got, I got a little bit of a gob here. And, you know, there we go. Does, does it need another law something? And now watch what happens where I pre-wet. Do you see it starting to move? Now I could tease it. It is all wet. It's just so thick that it's hardly moving. But I could tease it a little bit, get it to move a little bit. There we go. And you could, I, I'm going the next one, I'm going to pick up a little bit of that cerulean blue. Um, you don't want too much of this because it's very gimmicky, right? All this stuff is gimmicky. Lifting, everything's a gimmick. <laughs> don't want too much of that going on, but um, a little bit. Of, uh, I'm going to do it here. I'm going to pre-wet a little bit just so that it'll smear when I do it. I'm just gonna put this stub on, a little more blue. And I never quite know what I'm gonna get mine. But that's enough. And now, this is why I pre-drew those lines. Horizon, I'm just above the horizon. So convex a little bit, maybe, maybe, maybe not. And you, you know, it, Whatever. <laughs> so on, on one hand, like everything's so random, but on the other hand, that's why we spent all that time thinking about what we're gonna do before we did. I just dropped some blue, blue, blue in there. And I like that. And I wish I'd put more of that in the background now. And it's very wet. And if I do it now, I'm gonna get some big blooms, which I don't want. I'm gonna put a lot of blue there. I can like that bright blue. I might put a third, I might put a third thing. Um, and this could have been done, and then I'm gonna have to dry with a hair dryer. Uh, maybe, maybe I will do that one up on top. I'm gonna put some clean water, decide where I want this to go. Um, I, one of the best classes I ever took, I don't know who taught me this, but I took a class, maybe Rosie, where we drew a bunch of shapes and then we start putting color in the shapes. And whenever something was light, like this is light, uh, let's see, this is, this is light, the sky is light. Then we went darker on the other side of the line. And where this is dark, we kept things lighter. And all throughout the whole painting, we did that. And I think about that in everything that I do, every painting that I have, and especially on these birch. I'm gonna drag this one up a bit. I showed you, they weren't that prominent, but I showed you some horrid vertical marks on a tree, and this is why, because you wanna put some in. Now I'm gonna drag this branch, who knows? Who knows? Yep, it's not really coming. I'll pick up a little more paint. Ah, that's okay. Maybe I'll just finish it. Good enough. Good enough. Or maybe not. <laughs> All right. Uh, branch, little branches are dark. I can always paint that. In. I don't have to get it all with it. With the card. I can see I can put paint into water, but I don't want to be too precise here. So um, I'm going to do more with the credit card and the marks after we put the shadow in on the tree. So that I just want to take advantage of the background being wet and doing that. And I'm not going to do it on this one because it's going off the page. And I don't, I just don't want that dark, dark, dark up here. 
I'm not real pleased with these being in a line like this, <laughs> but I'll just put some other dark marks down here and we'll fix that. So I'm ready to dry mine. And as I said, normally I'd walk away and come back a day or more later, I think. <laughs> you got it. So, so good. It's a learning process. Yeah, my picture is dry enough. I don't actually need to dry it. It's a, it's pretty much dry. Okay. Now, you guys ready for the next step? Let's watch the time. Yeah. Wow, it's almost four o'clock. Oh. <laughs> oh no. I think we took a good half hour or more for technical difficulties. <laughs> Well, that's okay. We're learning. I mean, I'm just going to do one tree and I can do the stream too, very quickly. By the way, the part you just did is the hard part. If that makes you feel better. After that, it gets easier. So I decided that the sun is maybe sort of coming from back here somewhere. And the way I decided that was I, this pencil mark I couldn't remove. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes that's how we make those decisions. So I'm going to, I'm going to kind of, um, it's still not a sunny, sunny day, but I'm going to have uh, the sun coming from here. So I'm just going to shadow, I'm going to shadow the, the dark, the big tree, and then I'm going to do the river so you get it off, because you can always do the other trees. Yeah. So the way I do that, also a little bit tricky, is I just run the water down the center of the tree, just like we did on the sides, really. At the top, I'll go all the way across the tree. Remember, wherever I put the water, the paint goes. So I'm going to go down the center of the tree. I'm going to kind of step over this little mark because I don't, I don't want to muck it up too bad. Not that it'll matter much, but just putting clear water. It's okay if it's a little dirty, a little bit. And I'm going to stop at the snowbank. So I think you can see it. Yeah, it looks pretty good there. So now, um, actually, I just did that wrong. Um, that's what I do if I want the light from both sides, if I want the light to be on both sides and the dark to be in the middle. But mm -hmm. I can fix that. I'm going to take the water all the way to the end. Because my plan was to... Oh yeah, it's, it's gotta go the other way. My plan is to have the light coming from here. So when I have the light coming, when it's backlit and there's light on both sides, then I do them down the middle of the tree deal. But because this is gonna be the dark side, I can run this water right up to the edge and I don't have to, oh, but not over the bark. Notice when I'm going, I'm not, I'm not painting the bark. So I'm gonna run the water all the way down And once again, you want it good and wet. And really, it all goes a lot better if your painting was wet on the back side before you began, because then it, it will be much wetter. So I go all the way across the tree at the top, and I don't worry about crossing a bit on the bottom. Just because I don't want, I don't, anywhere where I leave white, your eyes are going to go. And I don't want white specks on the top edge up above here. They should all be in the center of the painting. So now I'm going to mix up my shadow color. And um, this is where you kind of decide your value. I think I can kind of. And um, remember, I showed you the reason why I took that one picture and I said, look at it and see how dark it is, is oh because, goodness. yeah, you can't make a mistake by going too dark on the shadow. The darker the shadow, the more you imply that it's sunny out. So I'm just going to mix up a little bit. That's a little bit wet. Remember, I got a lot of water on the, um, on the tree. So I can, I'm, as you can see, I'm really dark here. A little more watery than I did on the background. But look how light this is dried here. It's, I mean, it's really dark here. No, it's still not black, black. But well, okay. There, what are the colors you're mixing together for the? Uh, I just took the sepia and the, and the um, 
cerulean blue, but okay. you know, basically the same colors. I just had to get dark. So whatever it would be dark, I'm gonna throw it here. I'm just using the same colors. By the way, when I do a painting, I almost always stick with the same colors throughout the entire painting. And then you feel real harmony there. And I've, I've had people say, well, I wouldn't want to be limited like that. Well, I'm free. I can add another color in there if I want. But I use the example of, I had a little, I had a daughter, Josie's going to know exactly who I'm talking about. I had a daughter who liked to have everything just so. And when she was a tiny little girl, she wanted her barrettes to match her socks, match her shirt, you know. And that's the concept I'm thinking is, you know, I, I stuck a little blue here. I have blue mixed in here and I'll, you know, I'll have blue in the snow. You, if you're going to have harmony, you got to kind of move things. And if I have 10 or 15 colors in you can do it, but for one thing, the more colors you have, the more you better know about color theory. Um, mm -hmm. But um, it's it's harder. It's harder. The fewer colors you have, the likely you are to be successful. And most of my paintings don't have a lot of paint color. Okay, so I got this dark, 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 and I want bits of blue to show and bits of brown. I don't like it totally smooth. So really dark, it's all wet. I can see that puddle still on there. And the darkest part on this tree, right, is right back here. And I'm letting the water move and move the, move the paint. And that's what's gonna give it a real soft, round look. And I didn't want the water to touch that other side because if it does, I'm likely to lose the whites on the other side. And I'm being a, a little probably over dramatic here. I'm just wiping it with clear water, just gently. But I, I, the thing you don't see is how often I clean my brush. So I'm just gonna, and I'm just washing through that water to encourage it. Now I could pick it up, but it's, it's moving pretty well. And the other thing I can do if I want is I can, now I, remember I'm thinking of the concave convex. So I here I would go kind of straight across. I can go straight across sort of here, right? You see a little spot here. I like that little clear spot. I think I'll do the other tree quickly because this is wet. Um, just put your water in. Remember, I, I got the sky over the tree here. No problem. I'm putting darks on there. That's going to be just fine. So I came first with the water. I'm going to go. I'm just going to leave a sliver of white on this one. I don't want too much white. It's a subordinate tree, as of course we all know women are. So. <laughs> Get yourself in trouble. Yeah. What do you I say? Think, I think I'd get myself in trouble going the other way. <laughs> mm -hmm. If I said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I did say it that way. Okay. So I just touched it. I could just kind of let it, let it cross over. All you need is a gray. Any kind of gray will do. The more you touch it, the worse it's going to look. Just a warning. I'm not going to do the third tree now just because of time. Um, but what I will do is put some nice little black dark marks in there because birch have those kind of marks. If I do this now while it's wet now, now again, I'm remembering I have to curve, curve this way up here curve this way down here. Mm -hmm. So I'm using, I'm using this uh, paint right out of the tube, kind of mixing a little brown. And there's usually, there's usually a lot. I put that, I just put that dump on there. If this birch is going to be white, remember how I talked to you about that class where you put light against dark, dark against light. If I put some dark here, it's going to pop that birch, that, um, you know, pop that uh, 
piece of bark off. So if I want to show if I want to show off this bark, I'm going to put dark next to it across it. Now here, remember, it's convex. Really got to get that right. So I'm painting with my card now. A lot more level. You don't have to. You could paint with a brush, but. Having things turn out less than perfect is exactly what you want. I'm doing some mostly vertical, some, I just put a little twig there. Um, Well, I, could, I think I could stop there and it could be good mm -hmm. enough. I sometimes paint those things on and, but I like, I kind of like the rough, rough look. And especially the contrast of the soft and then the hard, hard scratchy stuff. Um, I told you that the bottoms of the birch are usually very dark. I'm negative painting this snowbank now. And if it's a hill, I'm going to bring the tree down a little bit like that. Same here, I'm going to bring it down a little bit. Um, so yeah, I could paint, I could paint more or not. I think some usually I overdo everything I do, right? <laughs> That's how I do it. <laughs> totally not necessary. I'm putting some little dots and some little lines, but remember when I told you to pre-draw those lines, it's so that you get them in the right direction. And right here, I put one in the wrong direction, but we'll fix that. Um, I'm gonna go back to the credit card. I kind of like that it doesn't, let's see, down here I have to scoop. I see I drew this wrong, do you see that? But I want it to go uh -huh. I don't want it to go the way I put it. Another kind of cool thing is when you look at birch trees, I'm showing you all these horizontal marks, but birch trees, I showed you, they were super light. I could, I could have had examples where they're really dark. I'm gonna put some really dark marks on there. And remember the idea, dark against light. So if I put these dark marks here, I'm just going to drag and get a dry brush look. Do you see that? Isn't that nice? Kind of looks. Oh, nice. And it's hit or miss. It doesn't always turn out that nice. I will also remember it dark against light. So I've got this light here. So I want to decorate it with some dark. I'm just painting with credit card now. <laughs> um, I'm on a horizon. Keep the line relatively straight. I'm gonna, the sky is light. I don't want really a whole lot of contrast there because it's near the edge of the page, but I'm gonna drag a little bit with this and just see what, see what comes. Um, and I did have, I'm gonna paint this tree in. So yeah, you can for sure be doing your birch, decide where that, decide where the sun's coming. So I think the high stress part is that background. After you got that in. Well, and then, oh, sorry. So oh, yeah. if you're like right now, you know, I don't have the snow in or anything. So do you just do that later? Yeah, with one of the last things I do. Yeah. Okay. And you're supposed to paint light to dark, right? <laughs> All right. Oops. I don't do it on this. Well, you know, we break rules, That's, that happens. I'm painting this branch just because it's getting fun with that card. Um, I might do this, some of this. No, nope, it's not showing up. Yeah, that didn't turn out, but that's okay. I'm not going to do the third tree because I want to respect your time, but I am going to do the creek and the creek can it goes pretty fast. You guys can, we'll do a little show and tell here in a minute. I'll stop sharing. And um, for those who don't know what a rigger is, a rigger is a long, thin brush like this. 
like this, really thin. Mm -hmm. And they can be nice for doing branches. Um, here, I'll, they're just here. There we go. You don't, you didn't need to have it for the class, but if you have them, they're nice. Okay, enough of that, maybe. Okay, um, just so that you can finish your painting um, <laughs> later, these trees that we lifted out, concept, dark against light, light against dark. We lifted it out where it was dark. Now we can paint it in where it's light. And they don't have to be very much other than like a grayish line. You don't, you don't want a lot of attention. So I'm gonna start here and just, just put in some color, keep it jagged, doesn't, doesn't matter. I don't want a lot of attention up here. They can start about here. And, and then oftentimes on these, wow, well, I have four and it really looks like four, doesn't it? And they're all at the same angle. Do you see that? And they're spaced mm -hmm. the same. <laughs> but, oh, the four trees all nice and neat in the line. I must have planted those myself. Certainly we're done by nature. So I have to add, I should have a fifth tree anyhow. I gotta add a fifth tree. Oh, maybe this was one. <laughs> anyhow, I have to add one because we can't have that four trees all lined up in the same direction. I don't know if it counts for one. But um, the other thing I can do, because I've done that, I've spaced them all the same and so forth. I'll break this space up with, uh, you know, the trees, a lot of times they, they, um, they part and they have another section. I'm just gonna blot it to get it a little bit rough. So when you get done, you can touch a little bit of detail on these trees, very little, very, very little, like that's too dark. So I'll just smear it. Just so that they kind of say birds. I sort of see a mark here, so I'll copy it. I sort of see one here. Um, I could do the light against dark thing here. Maybe put a little branch here. Space them all exactly the same, because that's what I always do naturally. So you could put a little bit on there, but you don't want it um, to compete with the ones in front. And, and they wouldn't wouldn't be if you're looking at something off in the distance, it's, it is going to be less detail and lighter. And um, the other thing is I think just, if you think of how our eyes focus, they, um, they're not focusing on the ones in the back. I'm gonna show you another trick because those four trees lined up looking perfectly the same width. I don't like the looks of that. So my trick would be if I could find my tape. And I don't see it. I might have to go to the workshop to get the tape. Maybe it went to the workshop. Yeah, I don't see my tape. I have to run to the workshop. But I'm going to show you. Are you ready to watch the river? Yes. Ah. Yes. <laughs> OK. You saw in the examples of some just suggested, and you can do that. You don't have to do a lot. Yeah. The river's done just exactly the way that are very similarly to the tree. Um, when I would get done with this, now we could either meet next Thursday if you want and continue, or I could just kind of quickly show you what I do. Um, but I think I can show you. You don't need me to do that last week. Well, yeah, I don't have to pick it up, but I will have to lift it to make it run. So to do the river, I don't have to worry about this part. I'm just going to lay it in because it's so little of it. But I'm going to pre-wet. And now I pre-wet everything except for if I want to leave some snow and ice. And so I'm not precise. I'm okay with leaving a little spot here and there 
So I'm wetting it. I'm going around this snow piece that we already established to be snow. And you can lift things out if you miss it. But So I'm wetting the river. Good and wet. Wetter than you did the tree. Did anyone find that you didn't quite wet that tree enough and it didn't flow when you put yeah. it on? Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. takes, and that's where if you would wet the back of the painting, that would help. But mm -hmm. it, it takes practice to get that. Yeah. Tree. Okay, the river has to be more wet than the tree. You have to be able to see the water. I could negative paint around this tree too. I could leave a piece of bark right there. That would have been really nice, wouldn't it? But I didn't do it. <laughs> okay, so I have my river really wet. Now I decide the value of that river. And I had pre-decided in my little value sketch that I wanted the background to really be the, the dark, dark, dark. So I'm not gonna, I'm not, I oftentimes make the river the darkest part because when you're out there, it's black, but I'm an artist and I'm gonna make this picture work now. I'm not so worried about what you actually see. So I don't want my, my river really, really dark. I, I mean, it's gonna be dark, but not super dark. And I'm gonna put some of that blue in there, even though in reality, really, it's just it's so dark. It just looks like ink. That's why I wanted you to see those pictures or maybe go out and hike. But I'm an artist, and if I want to make my river blue and have bits of blue in it, I will. So I wet it, and then I tip it. And I know you're getting a, a slanted view of it. Maybe I can do it paint backwards. Can I paint backwards is the question. So I start at the top, and I let it run. This is fun. What color are you using, sir? Thank or Karen? You. Karen. <laughs> Same old, same old. Oh, same stuff. Okay. It's just, it's just sepia. I'm going to drop some blue in there to make it a little bluer. Now I can leave specs. Remember, I can always get. I'm not. Oh, I see. I'm really not good at painting upside down. I see. So I have a little piece of snow there, and I just let it run. I don't want too much snow or ice. But I can always get rid of them. I can just paint over them. On the other hand, everything that happens spontaneously is really pretty special. I think. So I'm going to put some more darks in there and let them run. It's kind of fun. To just let it run. And again, you can't do this with oil or whatever. Let's see. I'm I'm not painting upside down real well here. <laughs> totally didn't know what I was looking at. All right. So I could stop with that. I think I'm going to catch it with my paper towel just because it's going to get wet. I could stop with that. It's kind of a mid value, kind of matches my trees. It's going to be lighter when it dries, right? I'll lay it down this way and then you can see it. Um, I can, at this point, I can drop more in. If I wanted it darker, I could just drop in. It's just kind of flowing wet, especially if I drop it in wet, watery. But I really think that the less you do, the better at this point. You just have to trust it. You can, um, here, I'm gonna let it, I'm just tipping it around, trying to get it to flow. You can, um, you can lift. Now I, you know, I'm looking at these as little pieces of ice, and yeah, there's too many pieces of ice there. I'm gonna get rid of some, but I can get rid of those anytime. The other thing I can do, I'm gonna suck up this water down here. Is I can't really see what you're doing now. Sorry, I was there's just wa water at the bottom here, and I was just here, just picking it up with a somewhat dry brush, picking the drips up so they don't run. Now, because I do have that heavy yellow sky, it's kind of the barrette concept. I've got that sky there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put some yellow in here so it's repeated and it kind of looks like it's reflected into the river. 
Oh. And then lay it down here. I, I have to pick it up to make it flow. That's the thing. The, the less I do, the better, really. The more I the more I do the okay, so that's fun. <laughs> I could lift out and I look at other people's paintings a lot of time. They oftentimes will lift out. Hey, here, I'll do it. You can lift out really easy. You could lift out ice now. You can lift out, like I can lift out here. Do you see this? Can you see? No, you can't see No. This. Why is that? Because I don't have my picture up. Okay, I these are ice pieces. I can lift out a reflection below them pretty easy because they're so dark. I can lift out, like this is going to be a snowbank. I could just lift that snowbank out now a little bit. Um, I'm going to blur some edges that are on the edge because they're far away. So Chris close to me, blur far away, especially blur next to that tree. That'll push the tree forward. And I, and I do this thing where I dry my brush off. Now I'm going to add this little section here. Shouldn't be that hard. It's so small. Little section behind this. I'm going to add more brown there behind the tree. Not looking brown enough. It's a little too dark. Ah. Mm. I think I'm a match. I can lift it back out, right? Yes, no problem. Now I'm just going to, um, I think I might get it a little bit yellow back here so, to, to suggest that it might be, um, and I don't have to be wet and drippy back here. I just paint it in just like you're painting anything. But I might drop a little yellow in there to make it look like it's kind of reflected. And then and I could make that stream go in any direction I want. Mm -hmm. I kind of would like I kind of would like more yellow, but I know the more uh, yeah, the more more I paint it, the more I'm gonna get blooms. And, and I think the thing that's people go, oh, I love that stream, is the fact that it doesn't get, you have to not rework it. I think I'd be better off to, to put a um, glaze over it. I'm gonna blur that distance stuff a little bit because it's way back there and I don't need, wow, look how dirty my, oh, you can't see how dirty my paper towel is. Time for another one. Let's see, one more, another thing I was gonna do when I'm a little crunch for time, I was going to show you and I don't think it'll work. Nope. If this tree were still a little bit wet, I could scrape out, I gotta think what direction I'm going here. I could scrape out, but it's it's already dried. Mm -hmm. I could scrape out the more horizontal marks. They look really nice because they're kind of rough. I can see I added this later and it really looks like it. I'll just soften it there. That was easy to fix. Um, so you know how the third tree, third tree is gonna look just like the, the first and the second, only as I go down the family or smaller, less important, I will um, put less detail, less color, less value change, just keep it, Keep it less important. I could, you know, I might, I, I'm gonna try putting that shadow in. Fewer whites on this, less white. Let's see, I got that. I'm gonna put a big white by the river because, because of that concept of light against dark, dark against light. I'm gonna put this in just so that maybe I'll get a chance to scrape. I, my tree got a little narrow here. I can fix it now, right? I just put, put a big shadow in there and it'll be fixed. Okay, I'm gonna lay in a little shadow color in there. Does not have to be as dark as the other trees. I don't have to worry. I do like it to kind of flow though, so I need to pick it up a bit. 
mirror at the top. Yep, everybody's happy. <laughs> Darker where there's snow. I want the contrast against the snow. All right, there's my shadow. I don't think I have quite as much blue in it. I like it, it's rough. It can be rough. Now, I'm gonna keep my whites more where I have the dark background. Good enough. If I wet, I don't know if you remember, but I kind of re-wet that edge. If I re-wet it, it's going to soften like this, but I'm going to intentionally leave it dark or uh, rough like that. See, I can soften this. All I have to do is put some clean white water and let it flow and it'll soft. That part will go soft. You see right away it went soft? I'll do it up here. Got a, a little hard line here. Clean water, brush almost totally dry. Just soften it, tease that edge, and it immediately goes to soft. I don't have much yellow on my tree. I think I'm gonna drop a little yellow in there. And I never did keep up the reds very much, did I? <laughs> so much for that idea. That was kind of a last minute thought and it didn't, didn't really follow through with it. Let's think about, yeah. Yep. Well, so then I have a painting with basically three colors again. Yellow sky. That's that, and I'm spilling all over my painting as I always do. So when you're down by the, uh, by the snow, you could go really dark because it just pops the snow. And I don't want a white edge here. I gotta darken this. There, that one's good and dark. That's good. I'm gonna lift out here just because I have the river, river there and I'm gonna pop that river a little bit. Dark against light, light against dark. Okay. I'm going to do a, a, a rock. Rocks are, uh, they get very, very dark at the bottom. And the reason they do that is because they're in water and you wet a rock and it's really dark. So I always just put a little dark at the bottom. Even the edges are really dark. All the edges are dark. Sarah, you asked how to get this stream. The stream is currently not very it's, it's vertical, it's not, it's not very horizontal yet. But doing these horizontal lines will make it appear that way. Uh, it's gonna convert it to horizontal. So if you were to look at anything, whether it's a sidewalk, grass, anything that is horizontal, a road, a river, a lake, they're always going to have horizontal marks in them. So. I'm gonna like lift out a little bit there. It's already kind of wet. It doesn't matter what, I mean, they're just, they just have horizontal marks, whether it's, whether it's something darker or something lighter, it's just how they, it's how they appear. So, so look, the next time you look at anything, a lake, a river, a sidewalk, a grass field, there's always gonna be horizontal marks doesn't have to say, or, I'm gonna bring this little snow, snow bank back. I touched that by mistake the wrong way, but it, it worked. All right, so under all the, any rocks that you want. And then the snow bank, the side of the snow banks will be um, dark. And then below the dark, it gets light because it reflects. So to get a little bit light. You saw me lift that out a little bit. I, I don't have to lift them all out, but 
It kind of says that there's a snow bank. Do you see it with like this mark? Do you see it starting to look horizontal? And, and I tend to put my horizontal marks crooked, which never helps. <laughs> it has never helps on a lake. Yeah, not good. <laughs> horizontal, horizontal marks. So it's starting, you know, anytime. So whether you put those horizontal marks, like here, I have a big glob here that just has nothing going on. So why not put a little mark there? I, I have to do something. I have to put, I'll have it even go in like that. I have to do something with that design wise. This is just boring. Do you see how it's starting to lay down now? Yes, mm -hmm. that helps. Yep. So often in a painting, you'll see a trail or a stream that just looks like it's running right up the paper. Uh, right. Exactly. And this and is all- It won't lay down, yeah. All they need to do is stick in some horizontal. It doesn't have to mean anything. Because like, even if you are looking at a grassy field, so on all these edges, it's super, kind of repeats what you've got going because it's wet rocks. It repeats what you got going on the, in, the, in the trees, the little dark marks. Um, so you can have a stick coming out of the, out of the stream or grass. We, we haven't put grasses in, but this is how I paint. I paint so far and then I stop and then I draw, I draw sticks and whatever, whatever I want to add. I start branches, I'll change. I'm gonna go get some tape and I'll show you. This really bothers me that I have these four trees, kind of almost equal space. I'm gonna put a fifth tree in. stream is really pretty. The colors separated it. it. This, I like the way that the big tree, the color separated, the shade separated into blue and brown. Oh, oh yeah. Um, someone asked, do I use miscut? Only if you're under seven years old. <laughs> if, if you have little, well, actually, even if you have little kids, this is a great thing to do with your grandkids. I, I take a piece of tape and I just rip it vertically. And I always save my little tape. So these little trees are really bothering me. Um, and I need to change that somehow. I need to add another one. It's too hard to paint in there. And I think it is a little bit hard. So I need to add another one. I'm not sure where that other one, maybe it's gonna, I've got this big blank spot in the middle. A lot of my paintings have blank spots because I'm so afraid of painting in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift out a tree and by ripping the tape, if I, if I use the straight edge, it's way too straight. This might be a little too wobbly too. And now I'm going to think, do I want to lean that tree? They're all leaning exactly the same. Do you see that? You see how yeah. I can? So maybe lean out, lean like this maybe. There we go. That, that looks better. I have to do something rather drastic to break up that, that thing. So I... I gotta get there. So I'm well, I'm going to lift out a tree. It's, it's really easy. I mean, if, if I were to take my brush and just lift, it'll come right off because we have so much on there. They could make this a little wider too. That might, I might do that. I might make this tree a little bit wider. And um, I'm gonna bring, I might bring it out into the picture a little bit because they're also the same width. And usually for background trees, it's not that big of a deal that they're the same width. But since they're the same width and the same space and the same height, I think they're, they're too much. Okay, here's a trick. I use it all the time. Anytime I want to lift, 
I showed you how to lift when things are wet. Now I'm going to lift it while it's dry and it'll come, the paint comes right up. What you're not seeing is how often I, I wish you could, I'll, I'll put it here. But if I do that, I feel like I'm going to drip all over the painting. Every time my arm disappears, I'm washing, I'm washing my, uh... you see, I could get that to be so white so easily. I'm going to drag it down. I'm going to drag it onto the, down by the creek. I can lift that tree so easily. I think that hopefully will distract. Now, again, I can go so white so easily, but I'm gonna not go too white too easily. Hey, look, it's the same width. <laughs> How did I do that? <laughs> I tried so hard not to. Let's try to get it a little bit wider. <laughs> Put that tape back down, that's okay. I think I was afraid of going too wide. I don't like this curve here. I'm not sure I like that curve. I'll just go like this. Okay, wider on the bottom, right? Narrower on the top. I always think it. So I know I spent like 40 minutes telling you these concepts, but if you, you know, I don't worry about paint being spilled or this happening or that or a little blot. But some of these things, like the wider on the bottom, the taller on the top, those I think are important to get right. Okay, that that break up I think because it breaks up this yeah. rhythm. One, two, three, and I made that one a little bit bigger and brought it right up to the edge of my river. And if I put a little bit of detail on it, it's going to kind of make it stand out from the others. I didn't I didn't really lift here. I have to be careful not to lift this branch because this tree is behind there. So I don't want to lift that branch out. I'm gonna lift a little more. Oh and by the way when I lift I have firm little firm little brushes. They're not scrubbing brushes. They're just I just think what are you looking at? It's just pretty, pretty tough little thing. And um, it just helps when you're lifting to, to do that. Oh, I was going to show you how to scrape on that tree and I forgot again. <laughs> let it dry, let it dry. Let's try it. Just virtually, we should be able to try this. Let's just wet it and see if it kind of soaks and then maybe I can get another chance at it. Because I can't hurt anything. Hey, I could do that here too. I'm not gonna, you know, you, these trees are so forgiving. If you get these certain things about how they grow, if you get those right, then I don't think you have to worry. I don't even know where I went. <laughs> I'll try here. Okay, I gotta think about the horizon. This is what I think is important to get right. It's, it's a, a little bit convex, just a little bit. Okay, this is working. I don't know if you can see this, but I, I re-wet and I did that here too. Usually you wait till the shine's gone, but I re-wet. Okay, first thing I think of is, okay, it's near the horizon. So the last thing I wanna do is put a concave line. I could go convex and a little bit straight. Let's see if it'll work. It, it, I never know. Yay, isn't that a nice little line? So now we know, I've never tried to re-wet like that, but I'm gonna do it here. And the reason I've chosen here is because it's so light here and this, you know, and it, it, and then this is so dark. I just think it'll, doing it in a really dark place, I have a lot of paint to push. Again, got to think convex. Ah, yeah, I never knew this worked. You know, mistakes are good, then you learn. So you can re-wet your paint, now I know, and scrape in, I don't know how the, um, I don't know how the credit card, let's try it. Because I feel otherwise it put you at a disadvantage if, if you don't have a pellet knife. Okay, I'm going to scrape again. Horizon's here, so a little convex. Yeah, hey, I'm happy. That works for me. And, and again, you don't want to do 15 of them on your painting because it's too gimmicky but I am going to put one on this tree. A 
I'll let it sit for a couple of minutes and then push it. I, I like those lines. Karen, um, how do you do moss? Like if you have that curlyish green moss, what do you, you know, if you haven't used green in your picture, do you just use one of your colors or? Yeah, I thought about having a photo of that. In fact, I was walking the other day and I thought, oh, I didn't get a photo of that. And I thought, yeah, you're not gonna get everything. Um, I would, yeah, I would just put green, you know, limey green yeah. relative, relative to the rest of the painting. I mean, my background's kind of green. So if I put limey green, I don't know if it would work that well. I think it would be better if, if I didn't have all this green in here. Um, so, um, okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of, of um, shadows on those snow, snow, uh, on the snow, on the snow on top of the rocks. Okay, a couple of things. One is most of the time, and here, you know, those who did their homework, look at your pictures of the rocks. Most of the time, if you have a snow on ice on a stream, it's because you have a rock underneath it, right? So you can, you can draw that rock in here too. And then have your rock sticking out. And it's just It is sometimes maybe maybe after today after that seven inches that we got or I guess it got eleven inches up in maybe they they would have um, just mounds of paint or mounds of uh, snow but but usually it's sitting on a rock so for the shadows I just think okay I chose to have a sun here so I'm gonna leave the front end of that. And I'm just gonna shadow, you know, just this part is really important because remember the negative painting we did around the birch? I'm gonna do negative painting around this white spot here. And I'm just gonna let the sun kind of hit the edges here and just put my shadows down low. And the more uneven your shadows are, so again, the sun's on that side, so we have a shadow here. The more uneven your um, shadows are, the more it suggests that the surface is uneven, right? So I just, on the opposite side, I just kind of put a little shadow. And that, that guy that I showed you, Lewis, I, can't, I don't remember his last name, it starts with an C, C-A or something. He, um, he doesn't put shadows or rocks or he doesn't do any of this. So know that you don't have to either. And same thing. And you, I mean, a lot of people with snow, they'll soften that edge going with that clean, mostly dry brush on the top edge if you want to soften and make it look. But sometimes when I do that too much, I feel my picture looks kind of prissy. You know, so everything so soft it's like too much too much um this tree that i have here i want to bring it down a little bit just bring a little brown so dark against light light against dark i'm gonna i'm gonna lift off let's see the light side of this tree so i could pick there's a lot of picking i would do now um what color get, did you eat, karen yep yeah. What color did you use on the snow on the rocks? I just used that cerulean blue. And I did I did put a little brown. You can see a little brown in there. Because okay. I, I don't want it like blue, blue, blue. You know, it's a lot right. too. So I'm putting a little detail on this guy because, uh, because he's distracting rhythm that I had that was way too much the same. So it's just a nice distraction. Um, sometimes you blot, you put on, you blot off. A little, little rough texture in here is good. So I have kind of a dry brush here. And if you just put on some rough texture like this, again, everything I show you, like you don't want to overdo it. You don't want it all over the paint. 
Well, it, I, a lot of times I'll take a place like this, that's nothing's going on from here to here. And I think, okay, that that's a good place to put this little detail because there's nothing going on there. So I would add more brush, more uh, branches. I, I struggle with the painting the um, snow. So at this point, I kind of decide Sometimes I like to leave a sliver of light in here. When you look at your photos or you look at, you know, you're out hiking, those patterns can be just about anywhere, kind of. It, it depends where the tree line is and where the hills are and how level things are. I'm gonna, I'm just mixing up some of that blue and it's a tad on the dirty side. And um, one thing I know is I, I usually will darken the corners like this of my painting. And I, I again, I, I'm not sure I know that much about the whole shadow thing. I mean, uh, snow, snow banks, but I, one thing I do know is I like to darken the corners because I don't want your eyes going off in those corners. So that's, that I have, that's a given. I know the sun is coming from here. So I know that the back end of this drift, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna bring this drift down like this. I know that the back end of this drift is pretty dark and um, maybe the light catches the edge a little bit. I'll show you what I mean when I say softening. So my brushes again, I do that again, again, dip it in clean, dry it off. So it's super clean water. And then I wipe along the edge, and I did this everywhere. I did it on the birch, it's not wet enough. I wipe the edge, I'm not really going into the paint much, leaving water all the way to here. So that, that edge is softened. I mean, it, it'll come into the water. If it doesn't, I can tease it a little bit or add, touch in a little more and it'll, it'll kind of soften. If it's wet, and again, if the back, if the back of the picture was wet, it would be easier to do. Um, the other thing I do now at this point, I might add some snow going up the edge of a tree because it does. And if I happen to have left some white on the edge like that, I can get away with that. So I just kind of decide where the banks are. I'm going to, I'm going to make a decision here that this, I often do this, that the river has a little ice on it coming kind of this way. So I'm making horizontal marks. And then when it, I'm going to have it like, so it's kind of flat here. I'm going to go on this side, just some flat marks. But then I have it sort of going up, up the hill a little bit. Oh, here, we'll put some, put some shadow on here. And again, I'm gonna soften that edge again. Hopefully I'll do better. I got more water on my brush. So, and I, I, as I said, I don't really like to soften too much, but do you see how soft that got? So it kind of looks more like snow. And this pile of snow, I'm gonna, I'm just, I'm just kind of doing dirty blue. I don't want, I don't want it to look like it just came right off my, out of the tube. I'm going to soften that edge again. Same thing, clean water. Bring it down. So I, I have all this white in the snow. It's okay. It's okay to have some light here and there. I don't want it totally white. I'm going to take a section of it and turn it dark. I decided doesn't matter because as I said, when you, when you look at your photos and stuff, you'll see that there can be a ribbon of light in the background. I'm gonna, I'm gonna darken below the trees here and I have to stop from my trees. I'm gonna darken this as if maybe trees have shadowed it. I don't know what this, oh, that's a river. I was gonna say, I have no idea what that dark light. I'm going to kind of suggest that maybe there's a shadow there. And now I'm going to soften that edge a little bit. So I don't really want a braggedy shadowed edge. 
Although it's the tops of the trees, right? That was pretty arbitrary. Could have been, could have been anywhere. Um, here, here's where I get stuck. I'm going to create a little bit of a hill here and you'll see how I do it just like that. Let's see this. The sun is coming from this side. So I have to soften this side because the sun's on the other side of it. So this is like a little hill going up. And as I go away, that same hill, I'll drop in, I'm gonna drop in more color. That same hill is coming up here. And it's flat here. So anywhere it's flat, just put your horizontal lines. So I'm just, again, I, I, I don't feel like I'm very knowledgeable about doing the snow thing. I just kind of put in a few drips here and there. But I do know this, that if I want this to go uphill, <laughs> that I can bring it up at an angle like this and it will appear to be a hill. And then I'm just gonna soften again, soften this back end of that little snow drift. The implication is that there's a bit of a hill. I'm gonna hear that there's like a hill and it goes down to the river. So at the river, I'm keeping everything horizontal because it's flat. Coming down to the hill, I can, like off this tree, I'll put another, like I'll bring it down like this. So it, it looks like the tree is maybe a little higher than, I don't know that I need to put a lot more than that in there. I have this huge white spot here. I need to do something with that. I think what I'll do, I think I'll, I'll again, I'm gonna have like horizontal area here any little darker than that, I think. Just gonna put a little horizontal area here. And um, and then I'm gonna bring it up. And just bring it horizontal again up there. Another horizontal. Oh, bless you. And I got this side looking pretty boring. So I'm just going to take this. I'm just going to, it's white here. So it's a great place to go darker, right? It's dark against the time. All right. Just implies, I think, that there's a, not a lot of thought put into snow. I need to study snow like I've studied birch. I certainly have the opportunity to do that. So I would, I, I would come back and pick a little bit on those trees, probably do it until people have done too much now, Karen. I, I see I had planned on a little thing here. You know, you can, I have a little tree branch that comes down here, but those can be added. You don't have to do all that right away. Yeah. You can pull away and then decide, oh, I need, this is too boring. I need to do something. Another thing that happens, you know, all the edges of these, this stream, you see this kind of square hard edge here. That that tells you that the, the snow is like, you know, I'm going to round it off a little bit. That kind of tells you where the, the snow there, that it's the side of the snow. So I'm going to go in with some blue and put more uh, edges to the snow. Further back I go, the smaller it is. That gives me perspective. Closer up, I'll do bigger. Bigger brown, bigger snow pieces.
You can only do that on the horizontal surfaces. Mm. Well, guys, what do you think? I think this end of the river is way too dark, so it's really easy to lift that up. So yeah, it looks nice. Me several hours. Wonderful. Something like this. I don't. I wouldn't normally do it all in an hour, but hopefully you got. Should we go mm -hmm. upstairs and we'll do a little show and tell? Or all I have to do is quit sharing here. Are you all ready for me to quit yeah. sharing? Oh, we should screenshot it though. Oh, you, you could yeah. do that. Let me get it on. Nice. Um. I nice. see these two branches are kind of the same length, and then I would have a third that would be exactly the same length <laughs> or not. So I need to do I need to do something like that. Another thought, if you want to put this tree, that no, this one's formal. If you want to put this tree in front of this tree, take a branch. I'll get my rigger. Take a branch and run it right over the other tree. Sometimes that's hard to do, but it will, it gives you again perspective. You get that perspective when you do that. I'm just trying to get my little rigger loaded. So I have to think of direction. Um, I want to go over this tree and I don't want this angle exactly. Uh, so I think I'll take it up. I think I'll take it up and then bring it down. Okay, what this branch does is it pushes mom oh, yeah. behind dad. Oh, yeah. And yeah. It's important to do that to take you know, whatever your painting is. Oh, look, it's the same angle. <laughs> <It's not> <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna and curl it towards me. And remember the ones I showed you where they come right at you? Mm -hmm. And of course it stops right here because that's where the birch stops, right? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yep, I gotta do that. Um, that's just kind of dragging my rigor on that. But it does bother me that it stops right here. What I can do is I could even draw it right over this branch because that just pushes that tree back. So, and I'll soften, it's a little too hard here. I'm just gonna add water and let it run. You know, it's so nice doing birch. You really don't have to worry too much once you understand some of the, so um, yeah, I have a, I see I have that branch here. I'll pick, I'll darken. I love, this is a fun part, isn't it? Just yeah. adding these little things, but think dark against light. So I have this light snow, this light spot. It's my perfect chance to go dark here. In fact, I don't like painting with the rigor. It's too, too skinny for me. In fact, I'm going to, because I got this light snow, it's like a chance for me to put some dark, whoops, I'm getting into the stream now, to put some dark on the tree. So everywhere, everywhere, like, that something's light, put something dark. And if something's dark, put something light. And you'll do that and your picture will just kind of sparkle and play against itself in a way. And I intentionally left this dark for that reason. I'm gonna lift here a little bit um, to, to bring this part of the tree forward. I Now that I've learned that I can wet this, I'm gonna do it again and, and scratch out I'm gonna use my knife because I have more control with the credit card works. Oh, I forgot this little tree that I lifted out with the tape. I have to paint the top of it in somehow, some way. It has to go somewhere. I don't know where. Where is it going? Hmm. Is it going to cross these or is it going to straighten itself out? Who knows? Let's see. Let's just watch it grow. Crossed at the top. What do you know? Yeah, that looks better. Yeah, it does. It bring, yeah, I still, you guys will forever see the rhythm of those trees that, I mean, if you ever <laughs> see painting, it's like, yeah, there she is doing those trees. Just, 
And I can I can pull this one I had of the others by by just shading it a little bit or putting a little detail on there. I put a branch, I could do that. I could put a branch. So at the dark side is over here, I could just lay some paint in there and let it let it uh, look like a shadow side. Sorry guys, I went way over. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. <laughs> that last hour went like boom. That's the fun <laughs> yeah. part. <laughs> yeah, it is. And there's more, you know, I don't doubt with the bottoms of these trees. I'll put I'll put a little little bit of a snow bank in here. The other thing I might do, I'll just take a pencil. A lot of times at the base of a tree, there's little little trees that spring up. Mm-hmm. And yeah. maybe, like maybe here, just, I, I could just do a little, you know, a young little tree like this. And it'll be dark because they're not white. And then I could, you know what I can do is I could take that, that uh, snow bank and bring it. Um, so, and usually it's more than one. I mean, usually it's a whole bunch. And of course, grasses and twigs and, and that too. And this is where I stop and I go upstairs and, and I, might, I might put more rocks in here. Like I might decide that there's a, rock, a big rock here and put some dark in here. No, um, and grasses. I'm kind of pretending like this is ice here coming over. If it's ice, I'll, if it's ice, I'll have to just paint it, right? This is ice, this just became ice. This too, it's just flat ice. It's not as white as the tops of the snow bank. So then if this is ice, I'll paint with my finger a little bit. I could have I could have a big rock coming up here. Right. And it comes right down here and it's really dark. And so it goes. <laughs> and oh and look at that, they're the exact same shape. Funny. <laughs> That's funny. funny how that happens. <laughs> Another one here. A little dark here, a little dark here. I guess through there. That's better. I got three rocks. And then from the rocks, we could do, you know, little twigs or something coming out of there and you put those here and there. But they, if you just set it aside and come back, they'll just grow all by themselves. <laughs> you don't have to fuss too much. Here, I'm going to use my rigger. I don't like, I guess I'm not that accomplished with the rigger. I only use it when I need it. Nah, I'd, rather, I'd rather just take a little and get that in. So I paint. Uh, And here, I'm gonna just lift out like this. Easy, easy, easy when you have all that paint on there. And it doesn't have, you don't have to have a lot of detail, but it needs another one. One isn't enough. <laughs> well, yeah, it just looks kind of lonely there, doesn't it? I'll stick another one. I, I could have it go off the page. Some people. Oh, you know, the other thing I can do is have it, I can actually have it come onto this tree. I might do that. I'm gonna have it go like that. It's hard to do, isn't it? To your primary, whatever. Yeah. To just draw or paint right on top of it. But that also, it just, I wanted a focal point here. And I think by drawing, I think that that's, it's okay that I did that. And then, um, what's the name of the guy we took a class from up north? He said, uh, leave room for Leave room for your signature. Figure out. Sterling Edwards. Sterling Edwards. There you go. Thanks. Yeah. Yep. He's 
he figures out at the very beginning of a painting where that where that signature is going to go, and there it goes. So I'm laying in a little rock here. Little, I'm going to put this rock over this rock, just dark. I usually will mix some other color in there. I don't want it like you know. Most of this painting has been done with two, colors, right? A little bit of yellow, but almost all of it was done with uh, just the sepia and, and cerulean. Hmm. And now I, I got to put a little shadow on here. And if this shadow is not even, that's good because it just suggests that the the snow is kind of back and forth. I'm gonna I'm gonna wipe smooth some of that. I don't have to. It's just a rock. It doesn't have to be perfect in any way. Yeah, I'm gonna put this little bit of that over there. Those these rocks that I just added, I gotta cover this. Bill Wise would have be upset about that. <laughs> you see, <laughs> pick up these freebie things after the event, if they have the date in them. And then I, and, and just because of Bill, I put this tape on this morning because I was afraid he'd be here. He doesn't do first trace. So um, anyhow, he tells, tells me at least put some, and don't be afraid to put some pretty dark colors on your, um, sh your um, snow shadows because they are. Yeah, and I would continue to pick, but I could. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put a little grass here, and I gotta make sure it's smaller than this grass or these twigs, and that will help to give me some distance. Even those two pieces will be. So there's that perspective again. Everything you do as you go away, make it smaller. And that it, and this, uh, the other thing that that is suggesting is that um, that this this is this area here. I'll, I'll just put a little snow on it. This area is kind of flat, and then it goes up. And if it goes up here, it's going to be darker at the bottom, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to go dark, and it and it has to go up. There we go, and over. And then I'll take it back at an angle. So you start to, and if I put a little brown in there, it suggests that maybe there's a rock or grass or something going on there, which again tells you it's the edge of the creek because, well, because the creek itself wouldn't have quite as much. It bothers me that that edge is quite as sharp as it is because it wouldn't be. And so I play, and I do, I do kind of let the painting speak to me. You know, I'll like almost see a rock somewhere or see a shadow or snow or something. So these little specks that I left, I can still wipe them out if I want to, but so far I'm happy with them. They don't bother me too much. I think I'm gonna put a rock here, have some dark brown. Break that up a little bit. Again, Sarah asked, how do you get things horizontal? As long as you're going horizontally with your brush, you will create what looks like horizontal surfaces. I'm just bringing this line this way. I don't know what it is. It's just dirt or rocks or something in the weather. And so I pick and pick. And the other thing is, I didn't really have a reference for this, but if you have a reference that can help. <laughs> Because then you can see, you'll see a rock or you'll see a branch. 
and you can follow it. Sure. That how do you like this square piece here? Talk about organic. Huh. I can't do that, can I? I have to break it up. This would be the top of a that's better. Mm -hmm. This little corner doesn't quite cut it for me. Is there anything else that I haven't shown? Here, I look at this nice big bleed I have here. I actually kind of like that on the corner. I don't know why, but I do. I, I, I kind of see, I have the top of this rock here, and I see this little hill mound. So I'm going to, remember what I told you about white against dark, white against dark. I'm going to work with that bleed, and I'm going to put in... I love it when my painting tells me what to do. I'm gonna put in some dark behind here and pop that, pop that top of that rock and just bring in the blue and bring this back so that it goes up. There. And oh yeah. A little brown there because there could be some dirt. I could put I could put grasses now there or something. I don't like the way this ended like it ended. Hmm. Not quite sure what to do with that ending. Oh. I told you I added these little trees. I'm gonna the same snow mound. I like that. I like that little bleedy thing. I don't know what it is, but or what it says it is. I just like it when the painting does its own thing. It inspired me here. <laughs> it's a good inspiration. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think I'm going to head upstairs. Do you think so? Is this enough? And I'll, um, I'll go up and maybe you guys, if you have time, you could kind of show your paintings. I'll unshare.